and we are live well good morning everybody if you're new to my channel because one of these guys sent you this way i'm josh from red fury books we are here to just have brunch sip some drinks and enjoy some book talk here this is the second episode here and we have almost kind of a theme here three of us are at least living in texas now so alex is kind of the oddball out there mike were you are you born in texas or did you move here no today? no this is actually my 30th year in texas I moved here in 93 so but i would okay i got here as fast as i could that's a saying right <laughs> yeah that's what we're all supposed to say yeah i'm the same way i'm a transplant too i've been here uh 21 years, I guess. So uh, wow. same thing. But again, good morning, everybody. Welcome to our brunch and book chat. We're just going to go around the horn here and just talk about maybe what we're sipping on and what we're reading at the time. So Alex, what are you doing this morning? So I am just drinking a you know cup of coffee. Um, and I am currently reading in the midst of two books. I'm like 200 pages into Storm of Swords because um, I wanted to get that started ahead of you know i have some live shows next month for that uh and i'm also 150 pages left in fool's quest so the second to last book of realm of the elderlings which nice. is weird <laughs> um but yeah this that's this whole trilogy has been great it's super different than anything else in the series so far at least for me Absolutely. and oh, that's good enjoying news. it yeah, no, I the like the like atmosphere wise and tone wise, it feels very different than any of the other sub series, which is it really so even is. though they're the same characters, it feels like it's its own thing. I, I agree, especially with like the first book in that trilogy, like oh, yeah. just kind of in the same setting for a while. And I want I don't want to spoil it, but there's a really weird element to the first book as well. You're like, what is really yeah. going on here? And it was really. <laughs> Yeah. Well, and I said uh, chapter eight of that book, eight or nine, I forget which, but maybe the best chapter I've read anywhere. So, um, right, yeah, man. you're reading two great ones right now. Fool's Quest and Storm of Swords. I know. I mean, that's, yeah, that's just, that's <laughs> I kept putting off Storm of Swords because I'm doing the live hosting those two live shows at the end of April, but I didn't want to read it too early. Like it's a reread for me, so I'm not going to forget stuff but i didn't want to read it too early to the point that it felt like a long time before i did that talk but i also it's a long book so i wanted to get it started yeah absolutely so mike what are you up to this morning well as always i am never too far removed from a damn fine cup of coffee and i too am working through the greatest single fantasy book of all time uh, a little further than alex on page 392 nice yeah this of this you hear that you hear that that's me you know it's a good book when you hear that Heck yeah <laughs> <laughs> it's a tone nice. it's hard to pick up with one hand but yeah yeah that's what i'm doing it's great it's amazing cool i don't have a lot to add it's just it's awesome yeah. <laughs> ian ian that's andrew so wonders good. what we're doing with us <laughs> so, i don't know it's, it's early so my judgment's a little impaired <laughs> Did you make the mimosas? You mentioned mimosas. No, I was going to, but <laughs> uh, last night was a later night uh, of uh, beverages than I had anticipated, so I <laughs> might as well have uh, some coffee. So, <laughs> yeah. So uh, I'm Ian of Ian the Reader, and I'm drinking just a cup of black coffee. It's like um, my uncle actually works at Starbucks and they were throwing out like their big five pound bags of their Christmas blend because they had moved on to like the next promotion. So I've got a giant bag of Christmas blend that I'm working my way through. It's very nice. Um, and I am reading, I am about five or six chapters into dead house gates. Uh, Cause nice. we're doing our own live show in a couple of weeks. So very excited about that. Um, and I'm about a third of the way through American Gods by Neil Gaiman as well. Oh, nice. Freaking weird, but I like it. It is weird. It's, it's like, it's strange. Like, if I didn't know it was written by Neil Gaiman, I almost wouldn't know. Because it, it almost, like, totally reminds me of, like, a Stephen King book more than a Neil Gaiman book. Like, yeah, he writes... Now you're doing that Patrick good. thing, and you're just saying, hey, Mike, it's like Joe Abercrombie. You should read it. That's what he says. He gets to read everything. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's like Stephen King. Whoa, okay. Well, like, I, and I, I like don't American say that about. Vibe. It definitely does. I think it's because he's trying to like fully delve into like the American like style, I guess. But 
it's mm -hmm. it, it almost reminds me of like I mean his stuff is kind of weird too, but like some of the stuff that's going on, it gives me like Dark Tower vibes almost. Like, oh nice, very yeah. like, really out there. So I like it though; it's really good. It's definitely that's an odd book. I read that book. several years ago. Yeah, that's, I've that's read a few Gaiman, but like I mean, all of Gaiman stuff is a little bit weird. But this is like the the tops of the weird. So I like it. Yeah. Well, I mean, so I, I, know, I, guess I, I, I read Stardust, but Stardust. I also read Sandman. But, oh, you know, yeah, yeah. In our community, a lot of people don't want to count comics for some reason. <laughs> but, yeah, That's Sandman, not reading. Reason. Just kidding. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. I, I have the first two volumes of Sandman, and I keep meaning to get to it. Really? And then, good. yeah, that's what I've heard. I've heard it's amazing. Have you tried the the Audible? Or I don't know. You don't do a lot of audiobooks, Mike. You know, I, I had a, a Audible credit that was expiring, so I got that. So I was going to reread it before the uh, the Netflix adaptation started. And uh, I listened to it a bit while I was like following along with the comic, and that was really a really cool experience. Really, uh, okay, yeah, cool. I, I definitely yeah. recommend that. I was wondering how that was because I mean they seem to have like quite the production on them. So yeah, I'm a big James McAvoy fan. I think yeah, he's amazing, same. amazing actor, underrated James actor, McAvoy. and uh, he's yeah, excellent. He's, he's Sandman on that is really good. Yeah, nice. Yeah, I've read by Game and I've read The Ocean at the End of the Lane and Stardust, and I want to say that's it. And I liked both of them. Yeah. But Stardust is good, and first. it's one of those ones where like the movie is different, but it's good too. Yeah, <laughs> I always like that. Where that happens, yeah. Yeah, it's either usually if it's different, it's not good, but when it's yeah. different and good, you can yeah. appreciate both. It's like the Shining. It's like the Shining. Yeah, yeah the exactly. Shining. Both, both exactly. versions are good. Yeah. Ian, yeah, have you read a uh, Coraline? I think that's like his. Oh, young, I did read Coraline. Younger. I forgot about that one. Yeah. 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 I remember reading that, that as a kid, and just being like, "What? <laughs> what the hell?" Don't wreck. Yeah, I was like, I don't know if I'd read it. I know it's like a middle grade book, but it's pretty out there for a middle grade book. So definitely, yeah. Yeah, I've only done the Ocean at the End of the Lane as well as American Gods, but Ocean at the End of the Lane was fantastic. That was one of my best books yeah. last year. I should do That's that so one. Good. That looks like a like a one sitting read, right? It's pretty short. Yeah. Sure. Oh yeah, it's yeah, like ninety minutes tops. Wow. Well, I don't know about ninety minutes. I'm a slow reader, so maybe like. <laughs> Six or seven hours. <laughs> your, name, your name is Ian the Reader. You can't. Say I'm. Slow I'm reader. devoted. <laughs> I'm devoted. I'm not. Uh, Consistent, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Not rapid. Right. Yeah. I like it. I'm not good at it. That's good because it seems like since BookTube has kind of gotten bigger, it seems like everything's like a race. How fast can I get through this? And I'm still like, I'm. I'm still never going to be that guy where I'm just like, let me see how fast I can get through this. I guess. I know. You know, I. I kind of talked about it in one of my recent videos, but like I have a problem with that because like I really like reading and slowing down and enjoying books, but I also get a lot of satisfaction out of like finishing a book. Sure. And so like, mm -hmm. especially I'm trying to lean away from listening to audiobooks so much because it's so enabling. Like I'll just amp it up to like 2.5 speed. Right. And I'm like, oh, I've got an hour left. Yeah. When it's actually like three hours left, but like it feels like yeah. an hour. With so me, like I'm not so much as finishing it is I'm that I'm that type like as soon as I start reading stuff I'm like side eyeing that next book and I'm just like excited to read yep, that next exactly. book. I'm like that meme of the guy you know turn around and look at that girl that's 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 pretty much me with every book I'm reading <laughs> even if I'm enjoying it I'm always just like oh that next book though yeah right oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. I think we're all a little guilty of that it's one tough. there's just so there's oh, just so many books out, of that. out there so many books I want to read not enough time. Yeah, you uh, I agree show, though. You, audio, you get great recommendations exactly. like nonstop, you know. So it's yeah, rough. constantly hearing of new books that you want to pick up, and yeah, then series. I, yeah, I have a. Uh, yeah, I have a spreadsheet for my TBR, and it's like yeah, I think last year it started that. with like three hundred fifty sheet, three hundred fifty books are on the spreadsheet, and then I read like one hundred twenty books last year, and at the end of the year, it was at like four hundred. <laughs> <laughs> so many recommendations. Can't even keep up with that. Hey, as a finance guy, though, I admire that. You should all have a, an Excel spreadsheet of everything. That you <laughs> yeah, that's what I, that's what I was going to say. Plan? How do you plan so far in advance? I'm like, it's kind of what I do in my career. So you know, yeah. <laughs> I just apply yeah. what, what I know, you know. I just have the months broken out. I'm like, yeah. I have I mean, a, like, a. I can move stuff in, move through. stuff out. But, you know, I still like to yeah, say, exactly. hey, this, this way I don't forget, you know, because I'll have so many series yeah. I want to do and I'll just forget. You know, let's get that's what, Yeah, I do too. I have like series I want to read. Yeah. Santa Mike, didn't you have read. a didn't you have a video recently, Mike, about like series you want to read in 2024? <laughs> yeah, I always I was like, like dang. And everyone's always like, Oh, that's that's so early. I'm like, well, see, I put that one out to kind of get feelers, like, hey, 
feedback. And then like in the fall, I do my, okay, these are ones I'm definitely going to start next year. So it's really just kind of like looking for feedback. That's fair. I like that. that. Yeah. But yeah, you work in, you know, risk analysis, you do everything 12 to 15 months in advance. It's, it's just normal. It's you know, long, long range <laughs> forecasting. There you go. I have a, a note on my iPhone. With this month's TBR and a few ideas for next month. So, uh, I, I just, I can't, I can't, I try to do that. And then it, I try to do that when I first started the channel. And I think I started like nine book ones and, I, <laughs> and half of those series to this yeah. day, I still haven't finished. So I was like, yeah, I'm not going to do that anymore. <laughs> I think I started close to 40 new series last year wow. and I only finished two. That would oh, so stress gosh. me out. <laughs> yeah. I, I, like- I don't recommend it. There's so many book ones I want to read. And I feel like I, I recently, the last few months, I've read a lot of book ones, but I just really try to like cap myself on the number of series I have ongoing, unless it's something that I'm just like, you know what? I'm just going to not continue the series anytime yeah, soon. Me. Oh, I'm not going to start any more yeah. series until I finish Rumble of the Elderlings. And I'm like, ooh, these Ryan Cahill books look really good. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I was like, uh, the Mike Shackle books, I, I keep eyeing those now. Cause oh, my Mike God. So good, those and, Jeez. Yeah, I they, can't wait. I'm the reading the last win, one talking about in it. April. I can't wait. They're really wait, good. Which one? I missed what you yeah. said. Uh, Mike Shackle's uh, Mike... Last War, We Are the Dead. Yep. Oh, okay. Dead. Yeah. If you like First Law, I think you'll dig it a lot. Well, I I haven't read First Law. It's on my. I'm well, planning on reading one a month this summer. Well, to do here's the what you do. You get off this you call and go pick up yourself right now. <laughs> <laughs> That's just my. Opinion. What are you doing here? Get out of here. <laughs> do you guys? Hey, there's, read, a, there's a question uh, in the question in the chat for you, yeah. Alex. How tall your tall yeah. guy read? I am six foot eight. Wow. I'm, I'm telling you. In the U.S., amazing. which I, I don't know what that is in metric or anything. You just need to get it tattooed on your forehead. That way no one ever asks again. He's NBA <laughs> yes, I play basketball. Ball. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but... <laughs> yeah. Hey, are you going to play us a song? I see a guitar back there. Someone's asking about your guitar. You gonna, you gonna, I know. I saw you, that, you too. Do you sing and play guitar? Oh, yeah. Right. What kind of acoustic <laughs> is that? Uh, that is just an Alvarez. I have a Fender upstairs, and like my dude, Mark, his, his channel is gonna blow up room. like thirty thousand subscribers overnight <laughs> once he plays a song. He he's gonna do a review <laughs> in song format with a guitar. Boom, instant success. <laughs> that would be pretty impressive. <laughs> That'd be pretty crazy. <laughs> kind of fun. Um, yeah, I've played a bunch of instruments my whole life, so it's can't bring everything with me. I used to play played a lot like my first instrument was piano I don't have one of those here uh, that's at like my parents house obviously um so once i got into guitar it was kind of like the easiest thing to bring to two apartments <laughs> got it. <laughs> <laughs> a review i'll song. do one but i'll do it i'll do it for a book that i am not a fan of so we can make it a little bit funny yeah, yeah. There you go. But turn into like an Adam Sandler type skit or something. <laughs> yeah. Like old FNL <laughs> yeah. quality. That's that's the content we're all here for. <laughs> that's good. Oh, well, Alex, um, have, you read, have you read Dark Tower, Alex? I have. Yeah, it's one of my yeah, favorites. This is like something that would be in Dark Tower. Some just some random dude singing because that's just what Stephen <laughs> yeah, does. Just like Tower. out of but nowhere. Yeah, I saw this while I was getting coffee. I'm going to write it in the story. You, you know? never see yeah. the character again, but he has <laughs> he has impact on the tower. All right, but, but, but all of us would be like speculating. What do you think he actually meant by right. that? Like, no, it's just he just went and got a coffee that morning. That's what he saw. And he said, "I'm going to write yeah. that in the book." Yeah. No, that guy was in yeah. Carrie. That guy was in Carrie. Yeah, it'd be like. <laughs> It would be like a real life singer. He'd be like, put John Lennon in. Yeah, right. It, it, another pass. Right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> would be like, why is this here? <laughs> Alex is center of book two. I would totally do a book two basketball team. I don't know where we're going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to do virtual <laughs> basketball. <laughs> <laughs> I seem to I remember when the when you had the I, I struggled we getting more for this call, so uh, I'm, I'm like I'm not gonna be down with the hoops. I'll be the coach. There we go. <laughs> you look, you look like a coach. I can get out there and <laughs> score, guys. <laughs> get out there well, score. Uh, Alex, I seem to remember the four grimoire guys. You guys are all like six four and above, or something like that, right? Yeah, that, like that was Theo weird. and yeah, RJ and Baron. Yeah, we're all like over six foot. I think Baron's six three. I'm not sure. I forget. RJ's tall. Theo's like six. Yeah. Three. I'm used to being the tall one here, and you guys are making me feel like a munchkin. Six one. <laughs> yeah, I'm six one as well. I'm content. I'm the shorty. I'm five, five eight, five nine. If Oof. I don't slouch. 
It's, well, as, soon it's you, as soon as you said five, I was, I was, I felt bad. <laughs> <laughs> Can't relate. Yeah. It's weird because like I never feel. I don't know. Unless you're, the only time I really feel tall is like I'm in a grocery store and everyone's looking at me randomly. I'm like, why are you looking? Oh at my me? god, Alex! But... How many people? How many nice old ladies stop and ask you to get something off the top? Because I get that, so I'm sure you get it all the time. How you probably get? Oh, I've gotten that stuff off the top. Show. Yeah, I gotten that. And when I was um. When I was in high school, I was a busser at like a seafood restaurant. And the amount of times I would get stopped at a night just running around the restaurant being like, How tall are you? Like, do you play basketball? Can you help me with something? was just crazy. I like started That's doing like just coming up with like tall. fake answers. You're like You're a celebrity. <laughs> <great basketball. laughs> yeah. Be like, Yeah, I'm actually on the Washington Wizards and I'm just here. But they would believe that. Although I saw, um, probably when I was in yeah, Dallas, was I saw him. was it was it Sean Bradley? Was that the guy's name? He was like yeah. seven six, and something like that, something ridiculous. I saw him at a grocery store one time, and it was just like you're a different species than me. Yeah, like what? <laughs> just so ridiculous. Like somebody you're at a different a point in the evolutionary chain. You, you are not human. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like totally. Um, we were talking earlier about series and stuff, and I was I was just gonna bring up that I feel like before I started BookTube, I would read series much more straight through. Maybe with like hundred percent, kind of break oh, yeah. it up a little bit, and yeah. I would just binge it. And I just don't do that anymore. I I try sometimes I try to like uh, Prince of Nothing trilogy. I did pretty straight through at least for books two and three. I kind of went back to back. Fool's Fate and Golden Fool did back to back, but. For the most part, it's like pretty broken up, which is different. I think that's probably a big shift for me. Awesome. Yeah, I agree. I, I The problem is you have this big fear of missing out, and so you have to start all the series, but then it's really hard <laughs> to decide which ones to continue and when. Like, yeah. Actually, I looked. I did make a note of it. I, did, I started 40 series last year, and I only caught up on or finished nine of them. <clears throat> it hurts. Yeah, wow. I closed out 16 series last year holy smokes it's awesome it felt it felt um, it felt amazing i bet <laughs> i and bet it's year, yeah. that's not gonna be the case i mean i'll have at least malazan lingering at the end of the year but yeah. i don't i, yeah, I still <laughs> even though I try, to, I try to spend i try to spread them out but i don't want to i don't want to i don't know i just i don't like to leave the series dangling because then especially if it's yeah. too long you forget things and but yeah Okay, so I'd like to keep my organization, but have Josh's like drive and ambition to actually finish things. That would be really cool. There you go. Yeah. It's a good feeling. Yeah, I think, I like I think that's an insult, like Josh. When you say it's like a, it's amazing to finish a series or like a relief, and it's like I don't think that means necessarily that it's bad. It just you know, it, great. Oh, it like sense of the comp. Like when I finished Wheel of Time, people yeah. thought that was like an insult. They saying, "Oh, I feel like I feel like free because I, I finished." I didn't mean I was suffering with the series. I mean, it's like. Not feeling like, hey, I've got this one other thing to do. I don't know. That's just like I said, I work in finance, so it just always is like, hey, I got something off a checklist. It feels good, man. There you yeah, go. Absolutely. Yeah. It's also nice to have like the full I mean, picture Ian, of something when you're. Yeah. I mean, Ian, you mentioned that earlier. How even just yeah, even just finishing a book, you always feel good about that. But especially with a series, especially those mm -hmm. long series. Well, and then yeah. you know the full picture, and you can actually talk to people about it too. So exactly, and you don't have to worry about spoilers anymore. Oh my hey, gosh! Alex, I watched your I watched your Prince of Nothing video. Yeah, let me ask you an honest question: Is it as <laughs> complex as some people? Because I, th I think a lot of people get chased off because basically people say it's oh it's a lot like Malazan. People are like, Wah! you know, they're like, oh shoot, you know, it's it's a, it's a it's a lot of work, or is it just really dense, um, or is that, is that kind of overblown? You think? I don't think it's like Mal uh, Malazan. I don't think it's like Gardens of the Moon when it comes to complexity. I think. What's dense about it is he has a lot of like philosophical ideas that are kind of built in. That's how the world building works, but it doesn't really get there until book three of that first trilogy. And I actually found it to be the actual plot was pretty easy to follow. Uh, the thing that'll probably throw most readers off initially is just the names. The names are outrageous. They're like super <laughs> long and there's like a bunch of umlauts and stuff and uh, accents over all the letters and the names and they make, they just don't affect the pronunciation of the names, which is interesting. Um, so, but I think once you get 
kind of who's who down and what's going and where the stuff is in, in the world. It's actually a pretty easy story to follow, uh, especially book one or two. Book three does get a little heady, but I don't think it's n- anywhere near something like Gardens of the Moon, where you're just kind of thrown into a world and left to fend out, fend for yourself. Um, it's pretty drawn mm-hmm. out for you. There's like stuff that you could discover if you want to go and spend some time to look for it. But I think if you're just going in to enjoy the story, you definitely, you definitely can. And I haven't read the second series yet, but I've heard that goes into more mm-hmm. um, abstract territory. So uh, at least <laughs> that's for what the, said right trilogy. there. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's what I said. Yeah, that's what yeah. so Prince of Nothing yeah. is like, <laughs> yeah, that's what I've heard about Aspect Emperor, and I'm excited for it. But yeah, Prince of Nothing, I think, is pretty straightforward, and I think it's it's nice that it's a trilogy because you can kind of just read one to three of those books and get a sense of it. <laughs> that's who you want to read. <laughs> Everyone is true. Josh, not true. You on Amazon? <laughs> Where where'd you stop on Amazon, Josh? I just I just finished Dead House Gates like three nights ago. Oh, okay. So yeah, the, so uh, way early. All right. Well, yeah. Well, the three yeah. of us and Jordan are doing a a read a a readathon, read along, read along. What y'all think of Dead House Gates, or at least as far as you are? I'm only five chapters in. I loved it. <laughs> I don't think there's very many I, books where I went from like loving it to hating it to loving it as many times as I did Dead House Gates, but it's yeah. but my second favorite Malazan book that I've read so far. So I've read seven of them. I, so. It was for me, I found uh, Gardens of the Moon just probably more frustrating than anything. <laughs> and uh, but Dead House Gates, I enjoyed pretty much all of it. I felt it did drag a little in the middle, but um, the ending, the last hundred pages was oh, yeah, ridiculously good. And um, yeah, yeah, it had me excited for the series for sure. But uh, yeah, Dead House Gates yeah. was was uh, definitely a huge, I want like three out of five to five out of five. For those yeah, first Kari two, and yeah. are like two of my favorite characters in the series. So yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, I, I I agree. I think like there was a part in the middle where I was kind of like um just felt like a lull or my enjoyment was a little bit down. But then the last two hundred pages were just ridiculously hey, there's good. Madison. And I've also heard from a lot of notorious Malazan quitter and like sold her book <laughs> the next day that she quit. <laughs> oh my god. That's bold. That's real bold. <laughs> <laughs> well, I she, am, did she stop I just did, a, uh, did she stop after two is that what you're i yeah. know i think I she got wondering. like six or seven and she quit yeah wow wow mm. that's well you definitely know if the series is for you at that point i would, would hope yeah <laughs> maybe it's a it's yeah, a I don't struggle think I'd ever do a why you should read for malazan it's gonna be like hey if you're interested in malazan <laughs> here's what i think you might like <laughs> yeah I think fill up an AP for you. <laughs> I mean, it's an incredibly ambitious series. I don't want people thinking I'm insulting it. I'm not. I'm just saying it's it's not for everyone. It's definitely yeah. not for everyone. It's yeah. funny too. Like when we yeah. when we were talking to yeah. Philip about it, it was very much like it felt really exciting and like I was I was very pumped up about it. And then when we got on with AP for our Gardens of the Moon chat, I just felt like, oh my gosh, I know nothing about the book I just read because he's such like a wizard with it. I was just like, I've, I've read where was that in the book? <laughs> I've read Dune 13 times. I'm sure if I talked to AP about it, I'd be like a deer in headlights. Like, He's a wizard. At all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, it was enlightening, well, for, but also like... Dang. For Deadhouse Gates, we'll have... Uh, we're getting Alan on. And so that'll be a different oh, well, conversation than yeah. what we had with AP. But I think it's going to be a lot of fun. And Alan, from what I've heard, Alan is really good at hyping up um, a certain part of Deadhouse Gates, which I won't spoil, but I'm excited. Yeah, for that one. Thing with Alan, you got to be careful. He'll just blurt out spoilers like it ain't no big deal because he's so <laughs> amped up. But hey, yeah, he, and they can do his crup voice when you talk to him. It's the best. Oh, I definitely will. Yeah. <laughs> Let's start it off. I'm gonna have him introduce himself in his crup voice. I don't. I don't do the <laughs> audio. He, he did that voice from the audio books for me apparently, and it was. I was like, wow. I don't think I could have listened to that. So. <laughs> 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 but it's funny when he does it, like the camera starts shaking and stuff. Speaking of Alan and audiobooks, I see you have the Way of the Dan over there. Mike, have you started it yet? I haven't because it's part of that uh, that readathon we're doing on Keymark. Yeah, uh, so I, I nice. haven't started yeah, that and the and the final Percy Jackson with my kids. So we're Ooh. starting those on the first. Yeah. The last hey, which Olympian. team did you end up on? Mike, which uh, team did you end up on? Golden Keymark. Bards, I think. Golden Bards. Okay. Which you know, I'm on Darius team. I'm on Tories. I'm on Tories. Okay. Cool. But yeah, I'm saving Way of a Dan till 
I I, I quest I, I requested to be on Tori's and she was the one who invited me, but uh, apparently she's just way too popular. So they put me on tier <laughs> list. I think I'll be okay. Yeah, I'm just glad a lot of people were participating. You know, because I thought the last yeah, one it was really fun. fun. So. That was fun. It's the first. Yep. Yeah, it's the first one I've done. It was really fun because my team won. So you know. Oh yeah, that makes yeah, that was fun. That makes it a lot more. Fun. <laughs> my team, my team did not win. No, it's okay. Same. It's okay. Well, we're doing a. I'm doing a different read along next month. Otherwise, it'd be a readathon. I always say read along when I mean readathon, and readathon when I mean read along. Uh, the bookish drummer Jake, he's doing a, a battle of the bands readathon. That makes oh, nice. That. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah, fun. Caitlin, Caitlin yeah. Like... Well, it's awesome. Like they do. Uh, he and Stacy like really go all out on like the the different stuff they put together for it. And there's 20 prompts, one per prompt. So I have a big month ahead of me. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I I am gonna slow down on my audiobooks and stuff, but not next month. <laughs> next month I'm going all out. <laughs> wow. Got to win. Yeah, Gotta win. May or June, I'm reading both Lonesome Dove and Gone with the Wind. And I'm like, well, I guess I'm not reading anything oh, wow. else that month. No. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, have you read Lonesome Dove before? I Oh, it's amazing. I, uh, I love the miniseries. Yeah. I watched the miniseries for the first time like a year or two ago. And it was amazing. Cool. Yeah, it's really I, I, I've never really clicked with Western books before. I haven't either. Power, but everyone says the character character first, like I am. That you, that I'm just going to eat up on some dub. And well, it's like, like half as good as a miniseries. I'm sure I will. Yeah, it's kind of hard to sell because, like, I when I posted my review, I was like, it's just a book about a cattle drive, mm. which in itself is not like wildly interesting. Oh, I love but... that movie, City Slickers. <laughs> right, <Yeah. laughs> totally. But but the characters are like unreal. How real they are, it's insane. <laughs> It's so good, Theo. <laughs> Theo. <laughs> it's a cult, Theo. Yeah. It is. <laughs> it is. Yeah, they're gonna brainwash you with their cattle prod. I look at like it's like it's like not everyone has read Lonesome Dub, but if they've read Lonesome Dub, they'll tell you about it. Yeah, so hundred <laughs> percent. It's good. Apparently, very very good. It's it's so good. I read it in January, and um, one thing I realized is okay, it's it's a western, but it has some of my favorite elements, especially fantasy elements. Because it has like a yeah. fellowship of characters that are on a quest, and it has yeah. these incredible character arcs. It has incredible world building, really. You know, as you see the world all the way from Texas to Montana. I mean, it's just, it's it's a remarkable work, truly. Yeah, it's also one of those so books good. that I almost wish was a standalone because it's technically part of a four book series, but it's been I think three or four years since I read Lonesome Dove, and I can't get myself to be willing to read on because I don't want a I different ending. Yeah. yeah. So two of them are prequels know, and then uh, one is a sequel. Yeah. Streets of Laredo. Streets are, That's the sequel. sequel? That's Streets a sequel. of Laredo. Yeah. yeah. But I, I read the flap on it and it reveals some of the fates of some of the characters and I was just like, nope, can't read that. Not going to happen. <laughs> so. yeah. I'm treating Lonesome Dove as a standalone. You know, you should. if I, if I just I love it so much, I can't get enough. I, I'll go back. I'll, I'll do that. But right now, yeah. I even put it on my standalones. I want to read video because for all these years before I had a booktube channel, I thought it was a standalone. I had no idea it was part of. Yeah, a I mean, there are always some those kinds of books. Like for me, that one and the Shadows of the Wind and uh, Pillars of the Earth are three that I could oh, almost yeah. read as standalones, even though they're part of a. Pillars series. of the Earth, you could definitely read as standalone. Pillars of the I Earth think. is like, incredible, man. I hope I, everybody's read that here. I, it's that such so a good damn book. I read it last year. It's now in my top five favorite books of all time. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. I used to say I haven't really read very much uh, historical fiction, and I, I just always forget I read that one in high school, and it's just amazing. I think I just put it on a pillar above everything else. Pun intended. Uh-huh. Pillar, <laughs> very nice. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's so good. I, uh, I love that one. I read the sequel, World Without End. Love that, uh, but I haven't read any of the others in this series. Well, and I know he's coming. Yeah, out I, this one? yeah, I've read all four. The um, the third one, the Column of Fire, is probably the only one that I don't put up with the rest. But the prequel that came out last year, The Evening in the Morning, fantastic. That's, so I, so I, good. I, I own that one. Yeah, I read the prologue, and then there's the a new one, and I was like, whoa, this is cool. There's a new one coming out uh, in September, The Armor of Light, which will be yep. kind of the fifth one. This one's set yeah. in the 1700s. So basically, it's it's uh, there will be an installment in Kingsbridge every hundred years with this next one. So 
possible. So in theory, um, couldn't I think you like just that. couldn't you just like read them in any order? I guess because I mean it's all different characters in these and everything. Or is there like a you could? A but I I don't know. Scott's here. We got to read in publication read. order, right? <laughs> but no, I think you should start with Killer because it's so good. Um, yeah, it's amazing. That would definitely. It blew okay. my I mind. Sort of, I started a war about the publication thing in my Narnia video. So, <laughs> well, yeah, actually, actually after that, everybody so, has their own Narnia order. Yeah. So, Mike, after watching your video, I went and searched on YouTube. I'll have to. I forget the the. There's a channel I found. Um, a guy who's exclusive to Narnia, and he has a oh. great video about why why the publication order is the best. But mm -hmm. it has like. Um, as far as the story is concerned, how Magician's Nephew just kind of ruins some of the really cool things in Lion, Witch, and the Wardrobe, if you yeah, read it in yeah. that order. Um, so I was glad, because I'm reading them right now. I actually finished Dawn Treader last night. I'm reading them publication order this did, year. So did the end of Dawn Treader like crush you like it did me when I was like, when I was 12, I cried for a month after I read Dawn Treader. <laughs> Not quite, so but it's definitely the first three. It's easily the best of the three. Yeah, it's so good. And I, I thought, okay, uh, yeah. It was it was really really good, but yeah, the end was very poignant for sure. Yeah. Uh, it didn't crush me, but it was one of those like, oh man. I think very, that very was good. like the first like actual series I had ever read in my life at the time. So you know, you feel like you're going on a journey with characters and stuff for a long time, and you you get to the end of it, and you're like, oh my god, you know. And I know the series keeps going after that, but to me, this is like that was. I don't say that maybe that should have been the end, but if it would have been the end, it would have been fine by me. It was, it was so good. Actually. Yeah. I mean, it really, yeah, it really does close those three very, very well. Um, but yeah, it's, it, it was very good. I was, I was very happy with it. I've been doing, I don't know if you know, Mike, I've been doing uh, immediately after I finish a Malazan book, I read a Narnia book. Yeah. Just nice to, uh, yeah. <laughs> just to have a, a Huge, huge contrast. And well, I say after I after I read I a Robin Hobb book, and I'll read a Stephen King, and I'm like, Whew, man, that feels good. <laughs> <laughs> so I read Bag of Bones, which isn't a short book, in like three days. I was like, wow, man, it took me like a week plus to read a, 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 a Fool's Fate. So yeah. So I was curious Fool's about Fate is Bag crashing. of Bones. Yeah, I was I was curious about Bag of Bones because I. You said, I remember you said you remembered it like not as one of your favorites when you first read it. And then I think yeah, you liked it more of, this next time around. Even in the 90s, I think at the time I was still a teenager and it just, yeah, it wasn't, I was there for the, the thrill still, the frights with Stephen King. So I wasn't ready for his drama okay. stuff. So reading it at this age, and obviously when you're you know, around the same age of a, a lot of his protagonists, it, it makes a lot more enjoyable, I think, at this age than it did as a teenager. Mm -hmm. I read back I thought back year. on it. I that actually made it. Day. I actually put it in my top ten when I did wow. my top ten. Yeah, it was really good. It, it got video. real weird at the end, but I said, you know, saying that about Stephen King books, like saying water is what. <laughs> but uh, it yeah, got right. really weird in that third act. But it's a, a lot more chilling, and kind of creepy than I remembered it being. So I was like, I don't know what my problem was when I was twenty. I, was like, I think I just yeah had my expectations too high because I had just burned through his entire catalog. You know five yeah. years before that so see for me yeah, i think curious. like my biggest issue really i didn't like the protagonist of that book i didn't no. like uh, the main character he i thought he was kind of the weird. only thing i wasn't wild about was uh what, mike's 40 and that girl's 20 and he's like just like creeping on her the whole time and i'm he's like he's saying that he's not creeping on her but then in his thoughts he's creeping on her i'm like it's like very Harry Dresden of him. Take yeah. it easy. Here, <laughs> yeah, very, very. Oh, yeah, Molly, I'm not, nothing's ever going to happen. Oh, my gosh, she's so hot. And I'm like, <laughs> stop it. Yeah. Ridiculous. I need to continue that series. I've been what, stuck What on book are you on, Alex? Proven Guilty. So, like, I am, like, oh. Proven Guilty. Uh, oh, man. Yeah, You're so in the I good. One. I finished Deadbeat, love Deadbeat, and I just haven't kept going yet. But, oh my gosh how could you stop you're getting to the point now though where it is like give me the next one where you yeah. will yeah i was doing that i was doing you know have one or two a month kind of thing while i was doing other things and once i got past like proving guilty was one that i feel like no one ever talks about i, I love proving really guilty cool. I'm yeah. into, like, movie monsters and stuff and it kind of plays into that and splatter con i love that stuff yeah but uh but once it gets past there man and you get back to certain other characters you've seen in the series before i, I couldn't stop until i was done yeah, nice. I put Proven Guilty top tier for me because I love the yeah all the horror movie stuff, and then you also get to see more of the Carpenters, and I love them. 
and then like I mean, yeah. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 are yeah. amazing. And then That's what I've heard like, when you get to... Oh, I've heard now like, it's the day that you say is... I'm gonna read I'm gonna read Dresden Files for like, wait till you get the changes. I mean it's just like every oh, day. Yeah, <laughs> literally. That's why I like, I like okay, I... I'll wait twelve books from now. Thank you. But it lives <laughs> up though. Like that's one of those books that's that I feel I like it's hard to overhype. Like because it just is yeah. so satisfying. It it just hits every beat so perfectly. And that's the thing about it is changes was so hyped up for me, and somehow it still exceeded those expectations. Exactly. It, like it, that's, I, I feel like you can't overhype it. To someone, I haven't talked to someone who read changes and didn't like. Yeah, it. I mean, you'd be the biggest like. I literally, oh, have not heard that two stars out of five books kind of guy, and then they'll they'll, they'll read they'll read changes. Like, that one's really good though. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but it was amazing though. Yeah. <laughs> Yep, so good. Wait but then the ones after are really good too. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm, no, I saw I'm, that. I'm, I'm excited at, to keep uh, going. I'm I'm even earlier in the series. I've had Grave Peril setting on my my TV shelf good. for like a year now. Uh, Grave <laughs> like, Peril was well, actually the one that almost made me quit. Really? Well, I was going to was... quit after the second one because I thought the second the first one, was... one that I actually <laughs> really liked was Grave Peril. Well, Girl. I liked a I lot of it. things about Grave Peril. Bucky the Vampire Slayer, that's why I liked it a lot. No, it's weird. Like, I love a lot of things about it. Like, especially you get to meet Thomas, which is really cool. Yeah. You get to meet uh, Michael. So some really big characters get introduced. But it's also just because of the court of vampires he's dealing with. It's like every interaction is like, <gasps> her breasts were pressed against the fabric <laughs> so tightly. I'm I like, I could shut up. Early Dresden, but... <laughs> yeah. No. No, yeah, but it's like every interaction because of the court of vampires he's dealing with. So it's just like, yeah. God. Yeah. Summer Night's good, though. Summer Night is excellent. You and then you good, got. Yeah, he has a good one. What? Uh, what's after the that? Fifth one? One Death Masks. Good. Death Masks. Sixth, yeah. I didn't like it that much. Death Masks is where the series like took off to me. To where I was well, like, you oh, mean, this, this I think that's when you mean Butters, villain. too. Oh, Nicodemus. Ed, Ed, yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Nicodemus is my favorite. Yeah. It's awesome. I could talk. Awesome. I could talk. Dresden all day. Like I, Dang, I got obsessed with it in 2020. Dresden. That's what you need to do. Well, like I, it's like my <laughs> life's goal to get people through Dresden because like I got into it in 2020, and then I got both of my brothers to read all of them, my dad to read all of them, uh, and like I'm trying to get all, everybody in the world to read all of Dresden. <laughs> well, tell Tori. Tori's in the comments saying she Tori, we're gonna get to it. She said she yeah. re- <laughs> listens to the chats, but doesn't. <laughs> And especially like if you do the audiobooks too, because James Marsters just does an incredible job as the audiobook narrator. Yeah. He, he, yeah. And uh, Jim Butcher's finally working on the next one. He posted an update. He finished I saw it. I, I was pretty excited. I messaged him and told him, hey, uh, you still got my email, you know, in case you need a, you need like a <laughs> test reader, right? <laughs> yeah, beta reader, I'm there, bro. <laughs> I would do that for you. I, okay. I need somebody. I need somebody to put together a, a Dresden file spoiler chat because I. I could talk all day long about Dresden. I feel like I'm so far removed from it. They'll just talk about it on the Discord sometimes. I'm like, I don't remember that because I think I read like the last 15, <laughs> like three months. So, I mean, so much oh, of it bleeds okay. together. But I usually remember pretty good what happens in each book. But they'll talk about like really, really like nitty gritty stuff. Like, no, right. it's not. It's not like yeah, World of Ice and Fire for me where I could tell you all this stuff and it's like my comfort yeah. reread, though. I feel like now that I've read all of them, I can just kind of pick and choose which one I want to reread, and I'll just go back to it all the time. That's cool. So. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, Tori, you're hurting me. This is like you saying you haven't read the Red Rising sequels. Gosh. Oops, that's me. <laughs> Wait, Tori, Tori hasn't read the Red hey, I've Rising I've only done three. Sequels? I've only I well, Tori because she's like the biggest Red Rising fan in the world, but I've only read three of the books. Oh so my gosh. Okay, I don't blame her though because the an ending of Morning Star right. is so perfect that like you yeah. know what else is perfect ah. Ian? Star what? Wars: A New Hope. You know what came after that? Empire Strikes Back. So I'm I, sorry, you're, you're you're stopping I, because you like the ending of movie one. I know. You know? I think the okay, sequels, but I'm. I think the sequels are better. That's what I, I've heard, I, and I, 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 I am. They're so, so much good. I love you, Tori. I'm just messing with you. <laughs> yes, I do hate the way you've read Dresden, Jordan. It's Kyle's fault. Kyle, no, Kyle told her that she could <laughs> skip books. So she skipped like three or four books and went right, to Deadbeat. Right, your first mistake was listening to Kyle. Okay. <laughs> that <laughs> is your first mistake. <laughs> yeah, didn't he, didn't he Kyle, skipped like, like six skip wheel like time six, books. Did he skip like six Kyle. wheel time books? Oh, he did. Man. He went yep. from uh <laughs> How is Lord, this making sense? He went sick? fires of heaven to gathering storm or something wild. Like <laughs> book five to book twelve. Yeah. <laughs> that doesn't even compute. Wow. He was like, yeah, I know. I, I, I want to check 
Yeah, he's like, I want to see Brandon Sanderson's take on it and see if it, if I like it. And then he I talked I talked to like, Kyle to about it. I talked to Kyle about how he misled Jordan in that way. He's like, I'm not about this orthodoxy around this, Ian. Think for yourself, bro. Take the red pill. <laughs> like, okay. <laughs> but then he had a good point. He was like, it was skip Dresden books or never read another Dresden book. I That's, did a solo that service. Was, yeah. Jordan, I mean, Jordan uh, was put, that, about to put down the whole series. And so he was like, just try. I guess. And she'll probably go back and maybe she'll go back and reread. Wait, hold on. She said, I read one, five, and seven. <sighs> So it wasn't even one skip. It was like See, so she, two. Oh, missed God. Grave Peril. So it has important stuff. Like I'm going to throw up. Summer Night, which is awesome. I like Summer Night. Oh, my gosh. That's hilarious. Yeah, I can't comprehend that. That's great because you won't have a four-year wait between book five and six like I have oh. for, for Red Rising. <laughs> I, I'm rereading them right now. Uh, we'll I am too. And I'm, I'm actually getting... So Jordan and Kyle and RJ have been rereading or reading them for the first time as I've been rereading them. And it's just nice. We all read Golden Sun this past month and their reactions were so satisfying because when we finished Red Rising, they were all like, oh, it was good. But I have a lot of issues with it. And I'm like, yeah, just just keep, yeah, just keep going. Just hold on. on. <laughs> yeah, like it'll change. And then um, I don't know. I think I, I think Iron Gold is not really talked about that much, but I love Iron Gold and I love uh <laughs> Dark Age too. It's just the multi. Ever Dark Age is incredible. Is awesome. Dark Age is probably the most messed up non Joe Abercrombie book I've read. So wow. yeah, Dark Age <laughs> so is. Good. It's not just a yeah. clever name. It it's it's apt. Yeah, it really lives up to it. <laughs> I feel like no, Red no. Rising is like the perfect series to introduce somebody to like adult sci-fi because yeah. of the fact that like the first book really sticks to a lot of like young adult yeah. conventions, Each and then you're hooked on the characters, and, and then like it gets darker and more deep themes and things like that and then you're hooked so yeah yeah you talk about watching everybody all the uh, first time readers reaction i remember when i got my wife to read the trilogy and i knew she was getting to a certain part in morningstar and i just sat oh. at the top of the stairs like watching her on the couch read just just to see her reaction it was so <laughs> i love doing that with it was people. worth it i think that's a, the first book since since you know song of ice and fire where i was just like i'm there for people's reactions which then turned into watching yeah. the reactions on the show where I was like, I'm not saying that I wasn't upset the first time I read these things, but I get way more joy out of watching you guys <laughs> get hurt by these I things. Now. <laughs> yeah, so, right. I was like me during yeah. reading Golden Sun this past month. I was just like waiting for people's reactions. Mm. See, that's how I am with uh, changes. I'm like, text me as soon as you get to the end. <laughs> like, mm. get, yeah, give me a live like, update. Brent both think that the sequel, the sequel books are better in Red Rising than the original. Trilogy. I'm excited to get too. to those. I really am. Oh, yeah, because I feel like it opens the solar system up a bit more. You kind of stick between, you know, mm -hmm. just to Mars and back and the moon, and you go out to the, you know, the 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 the, the gas giants and stuff in the in the sequels. And I love that, all that stuff. Yeah, and it's it's also cool to see, hey, so um, like what happens next after, you know, like a big revolt type plot line. It's always nice to see what happens next that sometimes Author that you answered. have to pace yourself on i i usually i try to avoid that personally just because i feel like i'll uh i'll get burned out if i read the same author six or seven books in a row so i usually yeah. i usually try to i try to pace it out a little bit yeah That's they're very few authors. Before, actually. i was i was actually like that with murakami i read like my first 12 murakami books in probably like two months so I just couldn't wow. get enough of his stuff, but actually the one that I'm, it. yeah, the one I'm really pacing myself is actually the back catalog of Robin Hobb, all of her Megan Lindholm stuff. I'm going to uh, just sold, sprinkle those here and there. Song. I don't want to, yeah, I don't want to run out of Hobb books. So I'm it's, slowing it's myself down on that. She feels like an author that like is done writing, but she's, I mean, she's still alive and like she posts writing yeah. updates sometimes. I wonder what she's going to do next. A few months ago, she posted yeah. one that was under her. She said she was writing under. It was like from her Robin Hobb account and on her Robin Hobb site, yeah. writing update. So people were like, oh, she's writing something under Robin Hobb. Well, since I've got her right whole now. series in a matching set now, I'm sure she'll put out an extra Realm of the Eldlings book. And, it and won't get hardback, a only. Yeah. Yeah. hardback only. Hardback <laughs> only. I'm sure that's what will happen now. So Because it's, exactly. <laughs> it's all about people ruining my book collections. You know? so. <laughs> 
Or it'll be like um, a quarter inch taller than the rest of them or something. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. Daniel, I don't have that one yet. Uh, the only the only non Realm of the Elderlings stuff I have, I have that short story collection, The Inheritance, and then I also have Wizard of the Pigeons, which I read earlier this year. And then oh, yeah. um, we're reading Soldier's Son. There's a whole bunch of us doing that. Um, Scott and a bunch of others are reading that June, July, no, June, July, August. Those three books. Okay. I might join because yeah. I'm going to finish Assassin's Fate next couple of weeks. So that'll be a, you got a, a miniature gap, behind you, you think. <laughs> <laughs> you got a little Minion. miniature back there. Oh, so yeah. Cool. This is my son. Miss that age. <laughs> Mine are yeah. gargoyles now. So. I've got a four-year-old and a one-year-old, which oh, makes lucky. Yeah, yeah lucky. it's nice. It's a uh, it's hard to do anything, but it's really nice. <laughs> yeah, like that's why I was almost late. Like I was running around, like here's your snack, here's your TV show. I'm gonna go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I would be down yeah, for a soldier son read along. Wait, when is that happening? June, July, August. All right, I've I'm heard of. Book two, especially, I think, is Forest Mage book two. I've I heard so. yes. a lot of people think so. Few people I've say heard mixed that reactions that on that series. Where everyone seems to just love Realm of the Elderlings, but I will even people who love that. I've, I've heard a lot of mixed reactions. Yeah, no, I yeah. definitely mixed. Yeah. yeah, if you look on Goodreads, heard, like, not that like it's the really most good. important source, but like most of them have like a three point six or something like that on Goodreads. I think. And you know, Goodreads, everyone's one star or five stars. You know, so. <laughs> Yeah, I I have not had a five star yet this year, and it breaks my heart. I'm trying to find one desperately. I talked about this the other day. The reason that I stopped star rating books is because that's all it becomes about is what star rating you gave. They don't read anything that you actually write. But if it's a smaller author or, or self pub author, I like to do that to try to you know help them out. So I did that for Mike Shackle, and I I gave it four stars because I give like. I give almost nothing five stars. I say it has to be like one of the greatest books I've ever read for me to give it five stars. And that pisses everybody off. So of course, all the comments were just about, wow, your review is really positive. Why not five stars? And that's all it became about. I was like, this is why I stopped doing this. I remember why I stopped star rating stuff. For that reason right there. It's annoying. Yeah. I gave, yeah, I gave gardens of the moon a 3.5 and people were like, you hated it. I thought yeah. you were going to like it. Like 3.5. So I, I was trying to explain that uh, to my kid is, is, you know, when I grew up seven out of 10, wasn't a bad score. Now seven out of 10 is apparently terrible. And I'm like, really? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Using the 10 scale makes everything seem better though. Like if you give something a three I, out of five, I, people like throw their arms. I've started up, like, doing that. Yeah. Up. That's advice. Sorry. For me. Cause if I give something, seven out of ten then it's three and a half or like six and a half out of ten and then it's 3.25 or whatever and i don't know it softens the blow a little bit for some people even though i don't think it's a bad book uh i think like online i was actually saw someone comment this the other day they were saying like online sales like amazon and stuff like that has kind of ruined star ratings <laughs> because if you're on amazon you see something that has four stars or less you're like i'm not like i'm not gonna buy that hundred um, percent so like yeah. people apply that same logic to something with books and stuff and so they're like oh if it has a three point something i'm not gonna waste my time it's just like that's not how it works it's very different. no very that's, awesome that's why i always love those videos when people like go on goodreads and say like like low rated books that i love or whatever because mm -hmm. everybody's opinions are different a three star for everybody else could be a five star for you like i have some of those where i really loved them and like i look at the goodreads score it's like a three point four or something like that i'm like are you yeah. kidding me? it was like uh grace of kings for me like that book has like a three something pretty right in the middle of a three wow i mean it's not a casual <laughs> read so i think maybe casual no readers yeah. might not enjoy it oh, i'm, I'm worried a five star strumpet <laughs> i want to be that that's a, i i miss the days when i could just throw a five star at everything but it's not been happening lately. Well, I do mine based on just my general enjoyment level. So if I love reading a book, mm -hmm. I give it five, you know, and a like is yeah. three and then anything in between. So, and I'm fine with um, that. I just yeah. wish people would be fine with my grading scale. Like, well, that brings yeah. down yeah, it's, average on Goodreads. Like, well, that's not my fault. That's Goodreads fault for having that system. <laughs> Sorry. You know? Well, and that's the thing. Everybody's scores are going to be subjective. So they don't mean the same thing. And I think that's where people yes, struggle exactly. with it. Yeah. Agreed I also like, 
<laughs> I'd also rather go back with some time passing. I'd rather go back and improve a, a book I read score than take away. Like if time goes by, I'd rather not drop a book score on Goodreads or something. I'd rather be uh, like, okay, you know what? I gave it three stars, but it's really a four stars. More time. No, I've been on Goodreads since I was like. 18 or something like that and my reading tastes have changed so much and so the other day i actually went yeah. through i was like god no i give that five stars remove rating yeah, remove right. rating like, i don't want people to look and think this is my taste anymore <laughs> I, I like straight up remove books and i'm like i read these 10 years ago this has 100 <laughs> percent. i don't that wasn't me that was a different person <laughs> Dude, no, I, I read a Colleen Hoover book and I gave it five stars. I was like, why did I do that? No. <laughs> okay. yeah, I know, I'm going to lose all of my a, credibility. I'll get, I'll get a comment on something I wrote on there like 10 years ago. One of them was about my review of Doom Messiah. And I was like, wow, I don't even remember reviewing that much less than like, I read that book. Yeah, wait a it. second. <laughs> wow. That's so I had to go. Like, they're like, wow, I can't believe you said this about it. I'm like, I guess I got to go read it now and see what I said about it. Yeah. I don't remember what I said about it. I'm curious. Do you guys have any books that like you read a long time ago and you consider favorites, but you kind of want to reread to like validate whether or not you still consider it a favorite? Yes and no. Uh, sometimes mm -hmm. uh, what I have is like, I call it the A-team rule, mm -hmm. and I can explain that if you'd like. It's, uh, it's just basically sometimes just leave some stuff in your nostalgia. Because upon revisiting it, it might actually damage for you. Like when I was younger, A Team was it, man. That was everything. Mr. T was the coolest. That was the best TV show. And when it was coming out in DVD in the early 2000s, I was super excited. Me and my roommate, we ordered some pizzas. We got the first two seasons. We were sitting down to watch. We watched the first episode. We're like, man, that was that was really bad. But you know, hey, sometimes pilots <laughs> just aren't very good. You know, it, it takes a little more about more about through episode three or four. And we're like, oh my god, this is so bad. Was it always this bad? And so that's where I started saying a lot of that stuff that I loved when I was a kid, I'm just going to kind of leave in my memory. So that's fair. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. I'm kind of scared to read. I had something. a similar I experience with reading uh, Arnie. I was like, okay, this is actually still really good. So yeah. I, it's I, always I, nice I, when no, they I'm still live up to that. Yeah. I had a similar experience with uh night rider. Remember night rider, no, David oh, Hasselhoff in yeah. the car kit 5,000 or something. And it was, it came out, it was in syndication when I was in college and I sat down and I watched the first episode and it was just downright horrible. It was so bad. It was like my yeah, favorite show. My show kids, uh, Thundercats when they were younger and I was like, man, this was yeah. a lot better when I was a kid. <laughs> you guys like it? They're like, yeah, it's fine. I'm like, all right. Uh, <laughs> don't hassle the Hoff. Oh, the, the first episode <laughs> ended. He had this soliloquy, and it was literally the worst acting I'd seen in at least a decade. It was so bad. <laughs> it was like one take acting back then. I was like, yeah, we got to get oh. the next episode recorded. Just go with it. Yeah, yeah that might have been it. It was the, so bad. Maybe the slamminess <laughs> intro ever, though. That song is so good. Yeah. Yeah. Right, right, yeah. I love it. No, Ian, I do that too, the rereading. Um, <clears throat> some of it I, I should probably take, take Mike's advice and just leave it as nostalgia, but – um, a lot of it I have been pleased because I actually I think I'm enjoying Narnia more as an adult than I did as a kid, nice. because as a kid, I think I enjoyed um, some of the other things I read around that time a lot more than Narnia. And it's very what I'm liking about it now is it's such a change of pace of what I normally read. And it's so different and it's just kind of refreshing because it is so different. But um yeah, I've reread and I still have some things I've, I've like from high school I want to reread on the shelf that I haven't gotten to in quite some time. And yeah, some of it ages well and then some of it not so much. So, yeah, yeah it's it's right. tough. Yeah. When I was like in elementary and middle school, I was obsessed with the Redwall series. Have you guys read any of those? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I was obsessed I with them. And those I, are, yeah, I don't care. Yeah, those are some I'm kind of worried to go back because like they were like all that I loved in, in books when I was younger. And I don't know if it'll still be the I same. I think I feeling. did those like Jordan did with uh with Dresden Files. Is I just yeah, I read, that's like, one, different. Four, though. eleven and stuff like that. You can skip like, around. Access to yeah, yeah. Uh, but then like there are some that I read like when I was in high school that I really want to reread. Like Flowers for Algernon. I feel like I'm gonna still love that book. I want to read. I want to read that. I've heard really good. Things. I got that. Um, like I did a video a long time ago about like books that made you cry, and that was all. A lot mm -hmm. of people's answer was that one and the Book Thief. Or two that uh, oh, apparently I've got to read. Yeah, I wasn't crazy about the book Thief, but Flowers for Algernon was excellent. And uh, have you guys read uh, Extremely Loud and Incredibly Close? 
Never heard of it. Oh, uh, it's like I a. Know, I, I remember the movie. Yeah, I there's, a movie. there's a movie. I don't think I ever. Yeah, yeah, that was my favorite book when I was in high school for a little bit, and uh, I want to reread that one see if it's still good. Yeah. But thank God my tastes have changed. I used to only read like YA. I mean, I was a YA, so I guess it makes sense. But... <laughs> right. <laughs> Okay, so now Scott, I need to go check this out. Dirty I've seen, it. I've video. seen it. Oh, They're very yeah, they <laughs> it's yeah, that's what brought it back on my radar. I watched Durfee's Redwall video, and it was <laughs> iconic. And I could watch his videos forever. I wish I had his his just not nonchalant attitude. Like he always says, like I'm not going to link it in the description. All you have to do is type in my name and the name of the book, and magically it appears i'm like Man, i gotta stop making it so easy for people go to the search bar <laughs> type in brian lee durfee reviews yeah <laughs> i love it i love it so much and we're he also like doesn't out. edit at all it. No, he's, a, he's the best i love him yeah yeah i'm gonna edit that you guys out. all read yeah. um have you guys all read his books for getting men no yeah. i haven't i, I haven't I, finished I the third book because i'm just an awful person <laughs> I, I kind of slow rolled it in December. Yeah. I kind of slacked off in December. And then once the year started, I had all these read alongs and all this stuff. So it kind of got, yeah. it kind of got buried, but you know what? One random day in like April or May, I'll pick it up and probably be like, Oh, this book's great. And I was like, yeah, I know. So, but I mean, the first two were really <laughs> sometimes good. Sometimes it's a mood thing. I feel like here sometimes where a book that long, especially you want to make sure that you're I think people assume because he's such a goofball that like apparently I guess they think he can't write. He's really good. I mean, if you like like yeah. John Gwynn, if you like like Faithful on the Fallen, I think you'd love it. It's it's a much yeah. darker version of Faithful on the Fallen is what the way I would sell it. I'm excited. I, I've heard he like tackles just... religion stuff in the books a lot. Which What's is that? Always really interesting. He tackles a lot of like religious conflict. Oh yeah, the in world religion. In yeah, he's real big, real big yeah. in, his, in like Song of Ice and Fire kind of way. Yeah, very much. Yeah, that's awesome. Somebody in the comments mentioned a book called The Builders that uh, is like Grimdark Redwall that I've heard is really good. Grimdark Have you all read that? Redwall. Yeah, uh, there it is. Name. It, it, I've been meaning to read it for a long time. It's not very long either, I don't believe. But uh, And then Esme said it was really good as well. So that's a double stamp of approval. Yeah, I think there. the first the first Grimdark book I ever read, and it's not sold as Grimdark, is Watership Down. Because I think I was... In that Australia. is grimdark. Yeah, they're all right? cute, fluffy, funny. Oh wow, it's a murder show. Okay, great. Yeah. <laughs> I can't believe they're letting us read this in sixth grade. Yeah, that and where the red fern grows. I'm like, were they trying to desensitize the the kids or something, or they're trying to like it's traumatize? Oh my gosh, where the red fern grows is heartbreaking. Why do yeah, they I make let little people read those books? My gosh, it's been thirty plus years. I can't even think about where the red fern grows without getting emotional. So yeah, fuck I, that yeah. Fuck it for us. <laughs> right, great. Yeah. It's great. <laughs> it's a great book, but oh my God, don't read it. Well, It'll there's so me. yeah, we're the red friends. There are multiple that. traumatizing <laughs> scenes. <laughs> I tell people all the time, oh, like, yeah. oh, there's no book that can make me cry. I'm like, well, if you read Where the Red Fern Grows and you don't cry, you might be dead. So <laughs> <laughs> you have, I have that's <laughs> that's actually another one of those that I've been meaning to read because I remember I read it like three times when I was in elementary school, I think it was like fifth grade and I haven't reread it, but you read where the red from grocery time. Do, do you hate yourself? I loved it. And yeah, I guess I did hate myself Bring on the pain. Oh man. That book was just, Oh Chuckle my God. Man. I just remember like in, we were oh, reading yeah. it out loud in the classroom and everyone's even the teachers crying. And I'm like, what are they doing to us? <laughs> they're trying to get you in touch with your sensitive sides. Make sure yeah, they're trying to know they're trying to weed out the sociopaths. That's what they're trying to do. They have little cameras. They're like, all right, who's not crying? Remember, like, who's yeah, not like, crying? Like the class bully was there. They were just like sobbing into his shirt. It's like, Jesus. <laughs> I remember. Uh, do you guys remember the movie? I think it was like My Dog Skip or something. It reminded me of that. That movie just any like, dog wreck thing like, like yeah. is gonna get me. I remember me. Uh, what was it? Uh, Marley and Me came out, and I was like, I already oh, know how this movie's yeah. gonna go. I'm not gonna see it. Oh yeah, and sure <laughs> not. I heard that's what happened. I was like, nope. Good call. Yeah. Yeah. Channing, Tatum, uh, no. Channing Tatum actually had a movie come out called Dog like last year. Oh, I actually I did want to watch it. I was like, is there any what bad is there any bad stuff that happens with the dog? And they were like, no. And I so I then I was like, okay, I'll watch it. That was really good. Uh I the have Arter, not read Arter, 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 is another one. Wow, Alex, have, have you read, read uh, uh, yeah. Dead Apparently, apparently uh, you, you don't get emotional over books. I'm, I do get emotional. I don't like it's hard for me to straight up cry when i'm reading but i absolutely no. get emotional like fool's fate i'll tell you assassin's assassin's fate 
I mean, I think I'm sure I've told you my experience with Assassin's Fate. The, Assassin's the Fate penultimate totally chapter. Because I thought, yeah. It's I yeah, thought no, it the penultimate cool chapter is it. so there's so much heft and so much weight in that last chapter that like there's a final chapter that's like an epilogue, which is like two or three pages. And I couldn't I couldn't read for like a half hour because like I couldn't I didn't understand words anymore. Because that last I next to last know. chapter was that debate just different on how with everybody else because Fool's Errand got me like that. Fool's Fate did Fool's Errand Fool's Errand got me. Fool's, Fool's Errand got me, but Fool's Fate, no. Just... Golden Fool is the only like one that isn't emotionally traumatizing in that trilogy. <laughs> and even that one has some moments. <laughs> but no, I, I don't really cry in books very often either. Like Kyle gives me a hard time for it because I read Hyperion. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, and I there's a particular three, segment yeah. of that, and he's like, "You're a dad, dude. You should have been weeping." I was like, "Sorry." <laughs> that would crush me I because get, because I, I called my kid's name is Alex, and I call him Alex Gator, and so oh. that, that 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 one story did get me a little bit for that reason. But yeah. as far as like ugly cry, no. I mean, where the red fur yeah, grows might be the only ones that ever got me that bad. As or, an or adult, I have end, end of Don Shredder <laughs> crying right I'll now. Definitely, I'll definitely <laughs> choke up, and I'll like some. I'll get teary-eyed sometimes but i'll never i can't name a time where i've like had okay. tears coming down my <laughs> esme said in the comments i wish i was a crier and like i feel the same way because i feel like people who like cry in books a lot like they just get a different experience out of it that i'm missing out on like i'm just like am single i not connecting to this enough every like yeah. one of those about like, like jordan cries every if, single book if you spent a long time with these characters and it's just coming to an end th that that would get me a yeah. little bit like like that's why i'm like realm of always. the other things might do it for me uh, the last book in the New Jedi Order in Star Wars, it was like, it wasn't no really an emotional book. It was just like, to me, it felt like the actual end. You know, Star Wars had been my religion mm -hmm. since I was like three. So, you know, I felt like the end of all those those major characters I love. So that'll get me more, I think, than just something traumatizing. Or I think I've just become desensitized since reading so much Grimdark now. I'm like, a character dies, I'm like, ah, that sucks. Dang, I hate that. That's, yeah. a, that's it. Then I move on. You know, but uh, if, it, if it's an animal dying <laughs> or, or, <laughs> or, or like the end of a journey, that'll usually get me a little a little more. I actually do like that about yeah. uh, Malazan. <laughs> There's that focus on, you know, there are worse things that can happen to people outside of death. And so mm -hmm. it like raises the stakes of, oh, people, character dies in the books. Some, it can be written in a way that doesn't affect you at all as a reader. You just be like, okay, next, keep going. Uh, and some other things can happen to them that don't involve death that could actually really devastate you so it's interesting yeah jordan cries every single book she reads. i can so see i can you know, see you ugly crying in fool's fate though there's a particular moment between fitz and the fool that just that's 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 on is traumatizing to me yeah i, I can't even talk about it because that's spoilers <laughs> but <laughs> i've heard people yeah. cry, though, jordan too. Jordan, you really need to prepare yourself for Assassin's Fate. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I it. actually, my wife and I were uh, reading all of Realm of Elderling together, and she's obsessed with the series, but she hasn't, she won't let us read the last one, so I still haven't finished Assassin's Fate. Because she doesn't want it oh, to end. No. I know, we read, <laughs> we read all, all of them in like a six-month span. We read all the other 16 books in a six-month span, and then she, I keep asking her like every month, I'm like, can we read Assassin's Fate now? <laughs> like, talk to, talk to Derry. <laughs> That's what she reread so that there's Rip not off an end. The My wife does that. She'll read yeah. like a 12-book series and be like almost done with the last book and just stop because she doesn't want it to end. And I'm like, That's so weird. It's crazy. Yeah. Oh, my God. I actually That's picked up a... Uh... Finish it. Yeah. <laughs> I picked up Assassin's Apprentice just like off the bookshelf the other day and just read like the first chapter and I was just like, oh my gosh, this is just, the nostalgia is so real with that series. To reread, yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, the, well, uh, especially because you uh, follow Fitz for so long. Like, ugh. I I think I'm I'm a lot like Jordan because I read the acknowledgments to Assassin's Fate and teared up a little bit. The dedication page, seriously. Uh, I think she like <laughs> doesn't she like dedicated to Fitz and the Fool. She, she dedicated it to the fits and the fool. She says, my best friends for 20 years. And I was like, uh, oh. <laughs> I mean, fits yeah. and the fool are truly like probably my favorite like duo in any books. So you've got like fits and the fool, Frodo and Sam, Gus and call from lonesome dove. And that's it. Those are probably that's my top. Three. <laughs> that's a good video topic. <laughs> Yeah. Best literary duos. There you go. <laughs>
Bridge I mean, fifth in the floor. Like a whole... Oh, Bridge Terabithia. That is emotional. That's, they I shouldn't like kids read that, too. I've never read it. Yeah. But my, it's actually, my it life. holds up. I read it in like 2021, and it holds up. So I'm going to get a refill coffee. One. Be right back. Yeah. Dead House Gates had way more, <laughs> was a much more emotional book than Gardens of the Moon. Gardens of the Moon was just kind of like all over the place and fun and. I was also trying to figure out what was going I thought, on. Because you could, I just thought it was easier to follow the story, so it was easier to connect I, with the, I think so, with it yeah. emotionally. So yeah. I think that was a big part of it, at least for me. But um, here's a good question: Aside from crying, do books get other emotional reactions out of you guys? Because I rarely laugh at funny moments or anything. I just don't engage in. I laugh. I guess. Sure. Oh yeah, I, I laugh reading first law <laughs> books like constantly. I laugh. <laughs> so. Sometimes I'll like have an Absolutely. audiobook on. I'll just be walking around the house and I'll like start laughing. And my wife just looks at me like, what are you laughing at? <laughs> <laughs> so you got like you, literally like, you know, if I told you, it anymore. would sound dumb. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I've been there. Tori, this one, I this is I only get angry if I'm angry at an author. Like if the author is bad or did something in the book that's just reprehensible. It's usually not about the story, it's usually about the author. <laughs> Um, so I've had that. So Scott yeah, Theo, no doubt, Macho Man in the road, comments yeah. about like never crying in a book. I, I I think one thing I can say for myself is like after I had kids, I became way more easy to break down for some reason. It's I, why I call it bad does, shit. Yeah. So a book like The Road, yeah, that that fucked me up bad because I had just had a kid, mm. and oh, so wow. that, that that really really messed me up. So yeah, it, I think that does play into it a little bit. You're you're smart. Scott, and you never had children, so <laughs> good job, buddy. Maybe that's why you're broken in that regard, because you're you're smarter than, than, than yeah. me. So I read I read Pet Cemetery right after my son was born. Oh like, my god! Not, yeah, I do I not that recommend book. that. That book, I was like, yeah, that book scared me for it. you know, it Holy scared crap. me for the right reasons when I was a teenager, and it scared me for the wrong reasons as an adult. I'm like, oh my god, that's yeah. the yeah. and it's so well done because of that because like it hits on two different types of terror, like the terror of like something truly horrifying, like a zombie cat, and then the other terror of like losing a loved one. Like yeah. it is very effective. Yeah, that book probably deals with grief better than any book I've ever read. So. Yeah, book's so good. But I don't know, you know, Josh is like a traitor. You know, Stephen King was his guy, and now he's all Robin Hobb this, Robin Hobb that. Hey, yeah. Robin Hobb is his one. favorite series. No, but no, Robin Hobb, Rumble the other one's your favorite series. Josh is a real big, what have you done for me lately type. I get it. I get it. You're out with the old and <laughs> with the new. It's cool. He'll find no, some my other top down the road, and he'll forsake Robin Hobb too. Josh is no, my top ten holiday. author list, King was, still, King was still number one on my list. Right. Yeah, but Hobbs again, this series, but this series, your favorite series is Rumble the other leg. Yeah, Realm of the Elderlings has surpassed okay. Lord of the Rings as my favorite. I'm curious then, what is your favorite yeah. Realm of the Elderlings series, and what is your favorite Realm of the Elderlings book? Fits in the Fool, Assassin's yeah, Fate. That's what I was guessing. Really? Okay. Yeah. I need to read Life Assassin's Life Fate. Fate. I'll do Life's Scott's Crazy, too. but Fool's Aaron is my favorite book that I've read. I've read nine so far. But Life Which one's Aaron's favorite? fantastic. Life of Traders is so good. I mean, we talked about it for two hours last week. From beginning to end. We didn't end. get to talk it's about so everything strong. we wanted to talk about. It it. I think it's the most consistent of yeah, them. Yeah, I would say. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it's... But the thing is, I love Fitz and the Fool more than any other characters in the book, but Live Ship Traders might be my favorite trilogy. Yeah, it's so good. Yeah. That's fine. That's, that's the one I desperately want to reread. That's, that's the one I desperately want adapted. Be so cool. Oh, yeah. Um, no, I would yeah, love I, I uh, a Realm of the Elder Link. It I, and I don't mean this as an insult, but I mean like I feel like that's the the only ones I've read that have enough meat on the bone to make into an adaptation. Oh, I, I agree. I the actually other stuff would be is all in, you know the experience yeah. I think with the Fitz books, whereas that one actually has like a real cool. He's a plot, a lot of moving parts. Yeah, yeah. I think yeah. you could do a yeah. good adaptation. Do like a nice black sales kind of adaptation of Life of Trevor. I think it could be great. It would be excellent. Yeah. I also feel like Absolutely. the magic system of of Farseer is would be kind of hard to adapt. Like the wit and uh, Theo, don't put down storm swords. Theo, uh, I'm not going to convince you to put Theo, down storm swords. Yeah, that's not Fucking anything, man. That's my book. <laughs> I'm I'm going to say put swords. it down. <laughs> Ship of magic. You you don't want to rush that book. Storm swords. 
just read it and you'll cut ship of magic will be there when you get back and you can enjoy ship it of magic so yeah. good though yeah, it's amazing Especially- how many people thought i wasn't gonna like live ship because i didn't like assassin's quest like yeah it's completely freaking different <laughs> uh assassin's quest other than the rain wilds book assassin's quest is my least favorite realm of the other thing but i will say though I mean, you're not there yet, Ian, but after finishing the series, that's the one I'm most curious to reread because a lot of that does play in the the very end. Um, Okay. And I've heard that. And it's kind of like everyone with Malazan talks about rereading Gardens of the Moon after they finish. Assassin's Quest is the one I want to reread most after finishing it all. But um, yeah, but I would agree it's. It's definitely a lower, probably a bottom three for me out of all. My of biggest them. issues with their like the pacing in the beginning and then the ending is just very anticlimactic. I felt like, like there are some aspects yeah. of it that are good, but I mean, never mind. I don't want to spoil for anybody who hasn't read it, but it's definitely slow. Yeah, but I still love it for a lot of other reasons. So they're talking about a uh, sure. Greenbone adaptation, and I couldn't agree more. I think a Greenbone I would love a Greenbone adaptation. Could be so good. Yeah, we brought it up on your on your stream the other night. Is that yeah. uh, this probably isn't the comparison people want to hear, but the Shadow and Bone series on Netflix, which is leaps and bounds, guys, better than the books. Okay, leaps and bounds. All right, but uh, they do an adaptation of Six of Crows in there, and it's very gangster, street level, like Prohibition era kind of style. I think mm-hmm. that team should make Greenbone. It would be amazing because that's the feeling that I get while I'm watching that 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 portion of yeah. the show. Really, really good. I would almost like to see I like a Greenbone saga adaptation, but like a prequel or something to the actual books, like a different generation or something yeah, like that, so like set in the same world, but like in the past a little bit more. I can't remember the name, but who, but like the the guy that was like the the, the shit in that culture, uh, for, for the uh, for the for the Mountain Clan or not the Mountain Clan for No Peak. Yeah, they were talking about the one that was. Like yeah, like about leader. him or something that like that. Pretty neat. Yeah, I I love that because the world and the magic system is just really cool. So I feel like there's a lot of options. <laughs> I think yeah. the next game, I don't know, the one I want to see adapted, most. adapted it right would be Faithful in the Fall. And I think that could probably be as, a, a, as big as Game of Thrones if they did it right, if they got the right showrunners. First Law is the one I want to see most. Oh, sure. I mean, first, gosh. First yeah, all, I, yeah. I just don't think they would do I, I First Law faithfully. They would, there's no way they would do it faithfully. I think I, they would change the ending and they would change some other things. God, oh, so good. Yeah. HBO could pull it off, though. That'd be it. HBO could. <laughs> HBO, That's basically and, like, where I'm at. Like, HBO, fan- Apple no, TV, like, or like I don't trust I anybody to do, to do fantasy except for freaking HBO at this point. They're the only yeah. ones that seem to understand. They can't be they can't stopped. Play. They're they're they've got some excellent content consistently. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. I mean, I have my problems with the Last of Us adaptation, but everyone else seems to think it's amazing. So, obviously, HBO's. I haven't. I haven't finished it, but what I think I've HBO seen, is I probably it. the most consistent creator out there. Uh, I mean, yeah. if they just think about, I can't even count on two hands. Like, if I tried to my top 10 HBO shows, it would be a struggle, probably. Really, would. So, I mean, rewatch. I've just started watching Curb Your Enthusiasm like this week, and I'm just oh, in that's tears that's laughing. I'm a big show. Seinfeld fan. I never watched Curb I love Enthusiasm. Seinfeld. Mm. Yeah, I've so, watched a little bit of Curb, but. Like literally, like the first episode, I'm like, this feels like a really uncomfortable Seinfeld episode with a lot more bad it's language. Very, I'm here for it. I'm yeah, Kirby <laughs> Enthusiasm is very funny. It's great. And just so many like, actors who went on to be bigger things already. That like, like uh-huh. I think third episode had Bob Odenkirk in it, and I'm like, shit, I remember yeah. watching Bob Odenkirk on Mr. Show way back in the day. But I was like, I didn't know he did anything else until, you know, uh, it was on How I Met Your Mother, and then and then obviously Breaking Bad. But yeah, Breaking Bad. Yeah, so I'm looking for. Hey like, Al, oh, thanks for the. the uh, awesome. <laughs> yeah. Hey Al, thanks for the uh, super chat there. Um, plans to read Way of Edan. Yes, I'm. I think maybe all four of us are starting at April first. <laughs> um, yeah, I know. Uh, in, in April, yeah, yeah. I, I think uh, most of us are reading it in April because of different read alongs. So uh, definitely planning on doing that. But uh, thanks for the super chat, my friend. I appreciate it. Um, yeah, I'm definitely looking for it too. You know, you, you, it's kind of hit or miss with the with the self pub on Amazon. So it's it's really hit or miss. But yeah. this is actually pretty good quality. Like I got that. I was gonna say Paul, my, that, my that Ryan Cahill book, really and it good. was not great quality. This is this oh, is really, this is really well put together. So. It looks really great. Yeah. yeah, I was gonna say yeah. I'm probably gonna wait for the audio because I really want to hear Alan's narration. <laughs> yeah, but that'd be fun. Well, True. I was thinking. Yeah. Because the sequel book two, I think, comes out in July, and I think that's when they were saying the audio for that comes out. So I was probably going to read that. And then, you know, before the sequel comes out, 
try Alan's narration for the book one and then go into the sequel. Or yeah, something. I was thinking well, of reading, reading that too. I, I will definitely reading listen. I want to listen now. Three Alan. months. I just, want to, like, I just want to hear Alan. I don't know if I listen to the whole book. I just want to hear Alan read a chapter because I just think it'd be <laughs> yeah. really interesting. I think it'll do great. I think it'll I'm do sure great. It'll great. I, I hope he gets some, like offers afterwards to do some more audiobooks because I know it's something he's always wanted to. Hey, yeah, what's your son's favorite book? Has he got one yet? Uh, he really likes Little Blue, Little Blue Truck. Oh, cool. uh, he likes anything uh, Curious George. Nice, nice. Yeah. My kids uh, were very Hungry Caterpillar. They both hungry caterpillar annihilated excellent. that book. Yeah. Uh, he really likes the If You Give a Mouse a Cookie. Oh, I remember yeah. those. Quality, quality stuff. If only I could put those on Goodreads. Man, I read like a hundred of those a day. <laughs> There you go. Oh, there's there's like, I feel like I should number. be reviewing these Dogman books at this point. I've done enough. Of those oh my gosh! Books, really. No, I'm not ready for that. <laughs> but you know, I, I am. I am thankful for the opportunity to to see why everybody loves this series that grew up with it now. Because I would have never read this on my own. You know, yeah, so that I, mean, is cool. I, I it, have. It's, it's been real fun reading it. With I, kids. Yeah, it's definitely one that I'll read with my kids. It's funny. Uh, I was obsessed with those when they were coming out. And I had read all but the last one, and the last one came out, and my family was like, "Oh, we should read these together." So I had to wait to read the last book oh. until we had like read the first four aloud. But then my dad couldn't wait, and so he read it on his own. <laughs> but I say we're he read it on his own like anyway. Like, That's betrayal. <laughs> and we're all, we're already like, man, we should just start. <laughs> so it's good though it's been enjoyable it's very a very good bonding thing because i think i like when i finished harry potter i just wanted something else like harry potter and everybody said you should try percy jackson i was like it's it's much younger than harry potter i believe you know whereas harry potter kind of grew yeah. with the characters of this one i was like it was much younger so i didn't read it myself but he got real into greek mythology and stuff i was like i think i have an idea let's see and it's just it's clicked so well for him that like we were watching I can't remember what it was, but there was a sword fight. And he's like, hey, this is like when, when Percy fought Luke and da-da-da. And I'm like, oh, man, you are you are really obsessed, aren't you? <laughs> so <laughs> it's good. It's really good for, for that age. He's 10. It's perfect yeah, awesome. for him. So. That's great. So what was everybody's first fantasy series? Narnia. Uh, Narnia. Like actual one that I read on my own probably. Well, I guess if you count Redwall, but Lord of the Rings, I read that when I was like 11. See, I read Hobbit, and I never knew that Lord of the Rings was its, its sequels until I was in high school. Yeah, I would say that <laughs> The Hobbit and Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets were the first two fantasy books I read. Yes, I read the second book before I read Sorcerer's Stone. Man, you guys are rebels reading everything out of order. <laughs> Have I told you all my I, It was just like my parents new- brought it home. My parents brought it home, and I was just like, they were like, oh, we think you'd like So you this. did like Tarantino like, okay, style? Two and then one and then three? Exactly, exactly. <laughs> Yeah. I was like, have I told you all I get the plot yeah. now I get the backstory and then I go forward have I told you all my super nerdy story about Lord of the Rings and how I read it no okay so my dad and my aunt are kind of like gatekeepers for Lord of the Rings because they're obsessed with the books sure. and the movies but uh I was like 10 or 11 and I really wanted to watch the movies and they're like you can only watch the movies if you've read the books and they were violent they didn't want me to watch it yet because I was young and I was like oh I really want to watch them and they're like all right you have to read the books and you have to pass a quiz on them and so <laughs> I read, no, hold on, man. It gets worse. I read the Lord of the Rings trilogy. I was like 11 and I really loved it, but they actually made my aunt and my dad made a 100 question test. There were questions oh on God. elven pronunciation in there. Wow. There were bonus questions on the Jeez. Hobbit. So and they're not, they're not gatekeepers. On. They're bullies. Wow. There was an, there was yeah. an essay. There was an essay portion and I did it. I made it. I made like a 92. So oh I got God. I got to watch the movies, but that's my Lord of the Rings history. So, yeah, I had wow. to really fight to watch those movies. Wow. But yeah, they're real extra. Wow. I keep I keep asking <laughs> my dad. I'm like, can you find that test anywhere? He can't find it. But if he ever does. Wow. That's that hilarious. I'm not I'm not wow. doing that to my kids. But it yeah, was funny. Right? I, was just, I was just excited that my kids were interested enough to watch Lord of the Rings. You know, so <laughs> I think they were shocked that I actually did it. I think it was one of those like he won't do it. And I was like, I and then they had I to make what a hundred questions. I'm up for the challenge. Yeah, that's a lot. It's a lot of effort to put that together. together would have been fun, though. I'll be honest with that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's really funny, guys. 
I, I'm just glad I made an A. All right, I made an A. <laughs> it was not an yeah, easy right. test. He didn't, read, he didn't actually yeah. read the books. Yeah. <laughs> if I if if I if they ever find the if they ever find the test, I'm gonna have to like do a live stream and have everybody take the test with me. Nice. Oh, that'd be so funny. So there was my uh, one of my best friends in high school. His sister was a few years older, and one of their English classes had to read Gone with the Wind. And, you know, that's a chunker of a book, but a great book. And of course she read the book, but everybody else watched the movie and they got to the test and there was one question on the test and it was something that was different in the movie and the book. Yeah. And she was the only one that passed and everyone got a zero on the test for Gone with the Wind because they just watched the movie and read wow. the book. That is cruel. <laughs> it's going to be the third time that I read Gone with the Wind. This, uh, I've this never read it. Is it? I mean, if it's the third time, I'm sure it's amazing. It's real good. Yeah, I mean, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's a it's a snapshot in time. So there's gonna be people who have problems with it, obviously. But I'm like, think about the time period it's talking about here. I was like, you don't you don't read books that take place in the 14th century and think that they're you know up sexist, to the right? Yeah, life, right. Yeah. You know, a thousand years ago, people were probably pretty different. So yeah, it's a it's a it's I I think it's amazing, but I, I can see there's. There's people who are going to have a problem if anybody reads it, but I think that's just silly. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm real big with, with Bradbury. It's like, you know, we got to remember where we were to see how far that we've come kind of thing. So if you go into it knowing, yeah, there's going to be some things that, you know, might seem insensitive. You just got to think about the time period, you know, it's kind of the same shit yeah. I get about Lovecraft, you know, so. Yeah. Robert, e. Robert E. Howard, same thing. Cause I know I'm, I'm slowly reading through a lot of those short stories. I've read all the Conan stuff. And um, yeah, there's a lot of things that nowadays, like you wouldn't write that, but you just have to take it in the lens of when it happened and just try to gloss over it as much as you can. It's, it's harder in some of the stories than others, you know, like some of the, some of the racist aspects of the writing in the Conan stories, it's okay. Cause it's a different world, but when you're reading Solomon Kane and it's an Englishman and all of that, it's a little harder to overlook it. Yeah. But, um, yeah. yeah. But, yeah, they can just, you know, don't worry. If you guys are annoyed by that, I'm pretty sure, like, within five years, I'll put out some edited version, like they're doing with, you know, Smile Doll and stuff right now. So. <laughs> Bro, they're, they're sure going to do that with like, I, I like to, too. Like, I liked Rob J. Hayes' take on that. To be like the most Which, safe books ever. Why are you editing those? I have no idea. <laughs> so, yeah. No, I like the, uh, Rob J. Hayes had the take on it. It was like, here's a way to advertise your IP that nobody talks about anymore. <laughs> so you're gonna say that this. you know that was the way to do it like oh we'll do this and then everyone will start talking about it and then there will be renewed interest in it and it kind of works i don't know say, say, this is what you're doing to try everyone to sell out your the, back yeah. stock of hard copies is this what you're doing right now so people are like oh we got to get that yeah. you gotta get the unedited version <laughs> so i'll get uh timothy chalamet's new wonka movie get hyped up behind it <laughs> that'll probably be good I think so too. I don't know. I don't know. The original is so good. I mean, how do you? Oh, so good. How do you? How do you beat? Well, they already tried again with Johnny Depp. Johnny Depp. Yeah, that movie. Wow. It's a wacky one. Well, I think the Wonka one is like a prequel. It's about like Willy Wonka as he. I think it. Yeah. Yeah, it's younger. Which is gonna be the gritty, the gritty, realistic version. Right. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) It's the. uh, He was living on the streets. (laughs) Started making chocolate to survive. It'll be him and Slugworth <laughs> in their gang wars. He's got his giant coke. He's like, you want a candy bar? <laughs> Winner gets the That's recipe me. for the everlasting gobstopper. Oh my God. <laughs> Actually, I mean, it, it is kind of dark. I mean, the first one, there are elements that are rather dark. Josh, think back to the 80s. Oh, yeah. Kids movies were, they were kind of brutal. Like, there's some stuff I've shown my kids. I'm like, wow, this is... Yeah. It's amazing that we ended up the way the, way that we ended up, because I'm like, look at the never ending story. That's a fucked up movie, man. They, yeah. ma- they made us read Where the Red Fern Grows. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. I, I know, tried like... to do the, oh, back in my day, they were harder. I was just like, they weren't scared to scare the shit out of kids until, you know, up until like the, the early 2000s, I think. They were still just like, yeah, scare the shit out of these kids. You know, it's good for them. I know when, uh, <laughs> when, when Jaws came out, it came out as PG. And so, like, my mom always everything was PG back her, then. Yeah, right. They all they all came out as PG. So, like, her and her family went to go see Jaws as really young kids on the way to the beach. And then she was just like, my brother with red swim trunks didn't want to go in the water for the whole week. 
I was like, I don't blame oh, him. Look, I'm, I watched <laughs> Jaws, I think, when I was like seven or eight, and I'm yeah. 44 now, and I still don't like to get in the water. So people are like, oh, the shark looks fake. <laughs> it looks real enough to keep my ass out of the water. Yeah, all right. <laughs> Pretty cool or nothing for me. <laughs> yeah, I have general like anxiety about being in like deep water where I don't know what's down there. I'm like, oh my yeah, God. I already have you know fear of the ocean, but you know that didn't help. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I get it. <laughs> This kind of circles us back. Uh, Black Cauldron and the Chronicles of Pride was actually my first fantasy series that I read. Oh, I remember this. I read the first two. I've seen the. I saw the the animated movie, which was dark. For yeah, Black yeah. yeah. I didn't know it was books. Honestly, I thought it was just. I didn't either. An animated yeah. movie. I didn't know it was books. Wow. How about that? Yeah. No, it's. I think there's five middle of them. Grade. I actually, I actually reread those. Yeah, there's five of them. I actually reread them last year. And um, they're actually quite good. The fourth one I would dare call existential. And um, I liked the, the ending of it. It, it contrasted with, I, I'm a, not a big fan of the ending of Harry Potter. And I thought it contrasted a lot with the ending of that because I felt that he had some guts <laughs> the way that he ended it, even though it was a middle grade series. But uh, wow, he didn't like the ending of Harry Potter. He monster. Yeah, that actually, if if it would have stopped at the epilogue, I might not have disliked it as much. But like everything in that epilogue was just oh no no. Me and my wife to the day still make fun of that epilogue. It's like yeah, I don't know why it's there. Go. Everything else was great, uh, but yeah, no, the epilogue was awful. We hated it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, That's take that story. out, and I can live with it. I mean, there's still aspects of the last book that I think she Come just... Come on, Albus Severus. Come on. <laughs> yeah, like... I was okay. just like, this just seems that really is like, forced. <laughs> like, actually, yeah, like, that is the, wor the worst name in The worst name in fantasy. Albus Severus. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> yeah, horrible. Oh, yeah, and this one, Cursed Child, that's, like, literally one of the worst oh. books I've read in my lifetime. I heard so many <laughs> bad things about it. I was like, I'm just going to let... I'm just going to let that series just stay where it's at and not read this. Yeah. So I have it because, yeah. you know, I buy everything, you know, Potter related, but I, yeah, I, I still have yet to read Cursed Child just because yeah. of the feedback I heard. I'm not going to put myself. Through yeah. That. It's, Good. it's, it's horrible. Absolutely horrible. Nope. Is it like <laughs> a, a shots fired? Sorry. Like the old bed? Uh, well, I, I didn't see that. Um, one. Oh, you're lucky. I, I didn't I see saw, that. I, think yeah. I, I only saw, saw the, the first. first same yeah fantastic same. Beast but, movie. Yeah. i've seen all of them it was right. i had we had a good enough time with it that we we did want to see more and man they completely wet the bed with two to where we didn't even watch the third one now i think it's it's just done they aren't even gonna third, make it the, the third, third one, one is slightly yeah. better than the second one but it was yeah, good. Johnny, like, johnny johnny depp was in trouble at the time so it was like wow we made yeah, a movie yeah, about yeah, grindelwald yeah. and grindelwald barely is in it because they pretty much cut johnny depp almost from the movie so mm -hmm. i was like Wow. Okay. Well, maybe you guys should just like can this one. I don't know, but it's easy for me to say here. It's a bummer because the first one was a lot of fun. I really yeah. liked the first one, but yeah, just, I know. Like, uh, super, yeah. like we want to make five movies, and I'm like, you don't need to make five movies. Just make. Yeah. Like, here's here's the deal. If you're gonna make five movies, movies really you need good. to have a plan. In. I think I think that's a, that's <laughs> a, that's what that's what was the downfall of the new the new Disney Star Wars. They didn't have a plan for mm -hmm. a they, we're gonna make that's a trilogy. Exactly we have no idea where it's going. Yeah, that's yeah. that's not. Yeah. You gotta it was like telephone. They well, if it had one director, director at the like very Jedi. least, yeah. yeah. Like, I really li I like The Last Jedi, but it just messed everything up. Now, now you're the monster. <laughs> I like The Last <laughs> Jedi. Okay, I like The Last I Jedi as movie. a film. I don't necessarily know if I like it as a Star Wars film, but I like the the themes. I like the cinematography. I like uh, the, the throne room scene. All that was great. Love that. There's some quality I, I in there. I think I've successfully expunged it from my memory at this point. So let me remind you of it. We open upon. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. I actually, I swore, I swore to myself after the Last Jedi that I will never watch a Ryan Johnson film the rest of my life. That's what I felt. That's, like. Everybody's like, Knives Out's really great, and I'm like, don't care. Yeah, <laughs> which is weird because I, yeah. I love. Wait, you guys haven't seen Knives Looper Out. Great. Yeah. So. I haven't, and, seen, and it's, I haven't it's, seen the second one. Oh my! I'll gosh, tell you, it's you it's one scene. Out. No, it's it's one scene in Last Jedi the that made scene. me swear him off, and it was the lightsaber toss. You say um, what you will about Force Awakens, but the last scene of Force Awakens is incredible. Yeah. And then he turned it into a piece of cheap slapstick. Like that was like showed me that I've he had no respect like for an L skit or something. Yeah, 
Yeah. The, he how just, did you make it through the rest of the no film? <laughs> That's like the opening scene. Know. <laughs> two and a half yeah, it didn't, it didn't matter. It was <laughs> it was done at that point. Yeah, it was done because it showed it showed me that he had no respect for the material that he was making. So I, I know was, the best thing the best thing I'm about him. the best thing about those movies is that it validated the prequels and made them actually like good movies in hindsight. <laughs> actually, true. yes, this is true. I, I was talking yeah. I was talking to somebody the other day and uh Revenge of the Sith, like it's top tier Star Wars, oh, I, I think personally. Movie. I like grew up with the prequels. I like that with, I never... the, with the prequels, I always felt like, look, George, incredible mind. He's not a great dialogue writer, but he's an incredible mind. Yeah. He's a visionary. Yeah. He's not a director. He should have hired directors for those movies because it's like a lot of that stuff could have been fixed with a better director. I think actually, like yeah. a lot of a lot of one take acting in those movies, and it's like maybe might have should have got someone else to be casting director as well. So, <laughs> you know, cause I mean like there's some good actors in those movies. And I'm like, man, this acting is atrocious, but I never felt like it wasn't star Wars though. You know, the sequels, like this doesn't feel like star Wars at all, man. So it's like someone's yeah. someone in film school, shitty writing of like what star Wars should actually be. That's what it felt like. To me. <laughs> Except Force Awakens, which I thought was fine. Cause it was, you know, we'd seen that movie before, you know, and it worked. Yeah. So, I don't know. Yeah. So Christopher, I actually believe. Right yeah. No, I I believe all this. I I consider. I don't believe in the whole Disney canon thing. I oh, consider yeah. everything I canon. The whole time that those books up there on my shelf, that's my canon. This stuff on the screen is Earth yeah. Two. Yeah. Earth Two. <laughs> the multiverse. Yeah. 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 No, it's it's. Uh, I've been really wanting yeah, to read the Thrawn right. books. I've heard those are really excellent. The Thrawn ones. Have you all read any of those? Well, I, I've never read well, any of the Star Wars books, but I've heard Thrawn great. is. Well, I've read Heir to the Empire. Um, I think that's the one I've read. I haven't read the whole trilogy. Ian, if you, Ian, if you love Episode Three, you really need to read the novelization of it. It's Matthew Stover. Okay. It's it's fantastic. Um, I just read it this past what month. That's what well, I've I listened the novelizations to novelizations of the prequels. I was like. This, there was nothing wrong with those movies. I think a lot of it was just direction, you know, because they agreed. The yeah, was pretty good. Yeah. Well, and yeah. Um, Lucasfilm or whoever hired, I mean, Terry Brooks, R.A. Salvatore, and Matthew Stover did the three prequel novels. Yeah, agreed. So they added scenes and they had a lot of latitude. So the dialogue, of <laughs> course, is a lot better, <laughs> but there's a lot more depth. But the third one in particular, The Revenge of the Sith, was fantastic. I mean, it was really good. Yeah. Yeah, and then, okay. and then I'll definitely give those a go. Yeah, and then Salvatore, uh, you know, broke my heart with the the first book in the New Jedi Order. And if you better believe, when I talk to Arya Salvatore, I'm going to bring this shit up because I'm still mad. <laughs> As you should. Have, right? <laughs> <laughs> How long ago did he write that? God, when did that come out, man? I don't remember. <laughs> You're like, Jeez. I know it's been 20 years, <laughs> but I'm years. angry. Yeah, it's 20 years, <laughs> but I still remember it like yesterday. You cut me, sir. He's going to be like, I wrote that book? <laughs> uh, basically, I'm just going to ask him, hey, you know, was that your decision or was that something they were mandated on you to do when you when you, when you you took on this book? You know, was that something they said, hey, you got to kill this character off or, or not? So, yeah. <laughs> He's going to be like, should I tell him the truth? Because I'm like, <laughs> dude, you don't kill anybody in Adris books. Everyone fucking lives. <laughs> you know? So what's the deal? Caden's got my back in the comments. He likes The Last Jedi too. I, Last I Jedi is quality, all right? That's cool. I'm never going to tell anybody else what to like or not like. But, you know. I, I respect I'll, it. I'll, I'll never but... hide that. That was my death knell, <laughs> I think, with, with Disney with Disney Wars. Yeah. Yeah. I think a lot of people. I get why it's divisive. Like I really do. Well, I think it just it, it got to the point where old farts like me is just we, we we got to the point where it felt like all they were doing was just deconstructing all of our heroes from our childhood. You know, every they're doing all these sequels 20, 25 years later, and they were just like taking a shit on those characters. And it was like with Luke Skywalker, that was like a whole different level. It's like it's like doing that with Superman or something to us. It's like, why are you doing this? You know, so I yeah. think that's why yeah. we had such a negative reaction to it because you're taking our childhood idol. And turning him into a, a grumpy old fart who's fucking drinking titty milk and throwing lightsabers. And, <laughs> yeah. yeah, and you you really see Mark Hamill's anger at that in any interviews. He's just like, yeah, he really, really did about it. Really didn't like it. He, he, 
sound like he got his he got his marching orders because he changed his tone. But like at first, he was really open about why. Like, yeah, this 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 is this is not Luke yeah. Skywalker. We, yeah. we call him Jake Skywalker. <laughs> yeah. So and he's like, it's not my character. I just basically rented out for the writers who mm-hmm. his character. So basically, made, what so. he said was, uh, I got paid, so yep. I'm going to be a professional. But yeah, yeah, you could tell he wasn't thrilled about it. <laughs> I was looking at that video of after, the premiere, after the premiere of Last Jedi, and Ian uh, Ryan Johnson's talking, and Mark Hamill just sitting there like, <laughs> <laughs> like, like it's like it didn't, yeah, I didn't even think it was this bad when we were yeah. shooting it. Yeah, <laughs> so. I was gonna say because Fit to Be Red brought Red Rising back up again. I said that would be a good adaptation. They did it right. Oh, oh sure. even absolutely. If they, you could even just do the first trilogy. I mean, I would love to see everything, but. It's like a pretty closed story if you wanted to make it. Have you guys story. watched The Expanse? How was that? Oh, love it. It. I love it. I, mean, that, that's I watched a few episodes because I love the show. Yeah. yeah. I watched a few episodes, liked it, and now I want to read the books first, at least a few of them before I keep going with the show. But which way should you I go? I mean, is it, I mean, books. is it always, well, the reason is it me, always I books first? like to read the books first. Yes. So, you know, then I can complain about how they fucked it up in the update. Not really, not really. But I just, I just like that. I like to read the books first. Uh, yeah. I feel like it, you know, you already kind of know some things about the character that obviously internal monologue you can't do on the screen and stuff. So I've always <laughs> preferred to do it that way. But the expanse after the first season, I read the first book and the first book goes past the first season. I was like, I feel like I'm spoiling everything on the show. So I said I was just gonna kind of keep them on with the show. Now the show's done, and I'm only on book four. So I still haven't read um, any. <laughs> Same. Yeah, that's what I I want to watch the show and read the books, but it's one of those like I don't know when I want to when I'll get to the books, but I really want to watch the show so yeah yeah i don't know i'm excited too because like after sun eater and red rising i'm like looking for another space opera type story i, I will say the great thing about the show is that it has uh, a basarala on the show the whole time and she's mm. mia like every other book and she's like the best character in the damn series so in, in my opinion and she's just so good on the show so yeah i, I would say that's one thing that i mm. think that the show has going for better nice well, they're, are they writers on the show? The uh, yeah, Daniel so. Abraham and yeah, that's what I thought. Okay, it's awesome. Yeah, but their powers combined, they are James S. A. Cordy. They're like they're like they're like, they're like Voltron when they like combine together to, to become like one mega writer. James S. and A. Cordy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wasn't it the rumor that they're the people that if George never finishes the books, yeah. they're the ones that'll do well, it? Well, they were uh, Ty Frank was basically like his assistant. Uh, yeah, and Daniel oh, Abraham obviously okay. already has several fantasy series that he's written, so that's that, that's always been the, the thinking that it would be them. But I'm pretty I'm pretty sure George is that type where he's just gonna be like, nope, don't want anybody to finish it. It's gonna be like his dying wish, nobody to finish it. It's so. gonna be like in his. That's will. definitely what's gonna oh. happen. He, he seems the type. I, I love him, but he does seem the type that he'll do that. You know, and then they'll, I think we'll yeah. get books. they'll find notes. You know, yeah. like uh, like Brian Herbert found <laughs> yeah. notes in his. He found his dad's notes. Weird. He's written like thirty fucking books since then. Amazing. How many notes did you find? How oh, many notes? Liar. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, you'll see that. You'll see that. I mean, they're still they're still finding Michael Crichton books. Give me a break, guys. It's I know they're, they're, they're playing you. Hey, I read this book. It didn't seem like Michael Crichton at all because it's not. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Using the name. Yeah. Well, I saw they did that with um. Like somebody finished the Asimov Foundation series because it was, you know, the ending is kind of open ended. And then he wrote the prequels and same deal. And, and I don't think Asimov had anything to do with it. They just tacked the name on and then yeah. somebody else wrote the book, somehow got permission to write the book. And you know, that actually that happened with Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, too, I think. Really? Wow. Yeah, yeah wow. which. Uh... Feels like a mistake. Yeah, there's like the original, I think, five written by Douglas Adams, and then somebody else wrote like the sixth book, I think. No, I need to fact check hmm. myself. It's Who like um, wipe that from the canon. It's, 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 that's why we the, you still uh, buy you still buy the collection. It only has the five books in it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's one called "And Another Thing" written by Owen Colfer. Nope. Mm. Yeah. Owen oh, Colfer. I, like, uh, time, wrote, or, I think you were Artemis Fowl. read any of the, the Conan books not by Robert e. Howard. I'm like, why would I do that? Why would I do that? Like, I, have, so um, I don't think Robert I'll ever read the Dune books that aren't. I have, Frank I have the Robert Jordan ones. I do have the Robert Jordan ones on the shelf that I haven't read yet. Because um, what I heard is he's the only like worthy successor. Um, right. yeah, and I read, uh, what's it called? Uh, Warrior of the Altai, which was one of his or Robert Jordan's early books. 
and it was yeah. totally giving me sword and sorcery Conan vibes. So that really made me interested in reading his Conan yeah, novels. I've heard but, that a lot. Uh, People tell me that. Whenever, we'll see. Yeah, I, I have the omnibus about Conan. Yeah. Yeah. Josh, have so, you read Gamble? Yeah, I have those omnibus. Yeah. What's that? Have you read Gamble yet? Yeah, I read oh, Legend I read in Jan January or February. Yeah. Yeah. Totally blew me away. Awesome. I immediately awesome. added everything he's written onto my TVR. Nice. Uh, he's one I want to get to. Everybody, so yeah. I'll I really want to try one. him and uh, Raymond E. Feist. I haven't read any of his stuff either. Feist, yeah, I've been kicking down the road since high school, man. Really? <laughs> You're the wonder if it's I'm, ever. I'm rereading. Happen. I'm reading those right now too. <laughs> really? I yeah, I really want to. Yeah. I yeah, saw I read Magician uh, in January, and then I'm reading. Uh, I read Silverthorn in March, and probably so they consider March Magician and, and Apprentice like one book now, right? Because it came out originally as two, but now they just consider it one book, right? Yeah, yeah, it's well, better. It's better as one. Uh, it yeah, just feels a lot more epic is. that way. But um, yeah, no, it's it's. Um, I've been kind of rereading sporadically all the stuff I read back in high school, like Dragonlance and. David Eddings and Feist and Terry Brooks and the Feist stuff is the one I'm most interested in, like continuing further beyond what I read back in the there's day. There's so many books. Um, so. Yeah, there's like 30 of them in that series or something. <laughs> but yeah. I'm going to do the, like the way that uh, Salvatore does it with Driss is how he'll break it up in the trilogies. I think that makes it much more yeah. consumable. Yeah. 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 He's the, actually uh, yeah, his are too. It's it's different series. Like the second series is actually the Empire trilogy they wrote with Janie Wirtz. So I'm reading yeah, that. I'll Alan's going to read along on his chat his channel in July. So I'm jumping in on that. But um, yeah, Feist is good. I like I like it. I can't say too far into the series, but at least early on, I really enjoyed what he what he was doing. Okay, for sure. Yeah, that's where he cut his teeth as an author, for sure. But uh, those are good. We love. Yeah. What's everybody's yeah, best book? Lot, what's everybody's best book they've too. read so far this year? Of which one? What's What's, what's everybody's best, best book they've read so far this year? Mm. Uh, I Mine's like uh, Kindling Riri. <laughs> what have I read this year? <laughs> I can't remember what I did yesterday. Yeah, I'm checking good. All right. <laughs> uh, I liked Kindred by uh, Octavia Kindred's E. Butler. Good. That was good. And yeah. then I read yeah. uh, there's this indie author named Andrew Van Way who writes horror books. And I read this one by him. Look at that cover. Wow. Isn't that wild? It was really good. Wow. Yeah. I would oh, say yeah, for me. No Shogun, yeah. Go ahead, Alex. I'd say for me, either Fool's Assassin or um, Deadhouse Gates. Probably Fool's Assassin, though. Fool's Assassin is so good. Yeah, I'm it. trying to bring up yeah. my reading challenge on on Goodreads, and I can't find it. <laughs> mine right now you? is a coin Shogun flip. Really good. Yeah, mine right coin now flip? is a coin flip between um, Lonesome Dove and Swan Song. So Swan I just Song. finished. Swan oh, Song. oh, I really want to read Swan Song. Well, I have to read Swan Song for my yeah, twelve books recommended good. by twelve booktubers. Alex got me reading that. Mm -hmm. Cool. Uh, if you're not like counting rereads, it, and I usually don't like to count rereads on a, a yeah. question like that, I'd probably say either a fool's hope or fool's errand. So one of the full books. <laughs> <laughs> the full books, classic. Golden, Golden Sun, Sun is a good one. Yeah, if if, if we're yeah. counting, if we're if rereads are counting, yeah, Golden Sun's just untouchable for me. Oh wait, it's I also read Jade that. Legacy, which Jade Legacy is oh. definitely a good one too. Mm -hmm. Oh, and the outsiders, the outsiders. I gotta say, the outsiders. <laughs> That's good because I'm so stupid. It took me this long to read that book, but yeah, outsiders is another yeah, one of those that get just endless hype, and it meets it. It's really yeah. Cool. I didn't read it until yeah. I was like 24, 25. A lot of people read it when they I'd read it in school. <laughs> the years in school, we didn't read it. Then we watched the movie with Young Tom Cruise and that whole cast. <laughs> Patrick Swayze. Oh, I read. Uh, have any of y'all read Jim Butcher's son's book? James J. Butcher's yeah, book. Yeah, Dead Man's Hand. Is that what it's yeah, I read it. I read it this year. It was all right. It, I mean, I'd say it's the strongest Stormfront, probably. So, you know, nice. we'll see where it goes. Hmm. Yeah, but Lonesome Dove is hard to beat. What did you say was the other one, uh, Josh? Uh, uh, Swan, Swan Song. Okay. Yeah, yeah it's I mean, kind of I, a coin flip between those two. Both of those I were just incredible. 
I've heard that yeah. the swan song is incredible, and I've heard it compared to the stand a lot. And I wasn't crazy about the stand. Like, See, I, I, I think it depends I think on Mikey why. talked about this too. I don't. Yeah, I don't. I don't really. I mean, there. It's both post apocalypse, but they're so different. It's really hard to compare. It's a very different two. take on it. Really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I really it's didn't. A large revolving chaos and a dystopian kind of future, but it's it's very. Mm. It's, I think it's very different. But I can see why people make those comparisons. They both have you know yeah. like the. The dark wanderer bad guy kind of thing they, they, you can see the similarities if you're looking for them True. but this need for people to say which one's better i'm like that's i don't i don't see that i know that's like people ask me hey what do, yeah. what do you like more uh rome of the oldlings or first law i'm like this is what apples to oranges man that's a weird comparison right there it's yeah, like it's really close weird. to the same thing so it's hard for me to do with stuff like that swan song's faster and that's good. like they're darker. both amazing books so yeah. ian you're wrong yeah. about the stand i'm sorry <laughs> you're allowed you're allowed to be right it's like <laughs> i i've read probably about 35 stephen king books and it might be like 11 or 12 what? All right. wow it's number three yeah. for me <laughs> i know every time i respect it i just it's not for me i i maybe it was yeah. like a victim of overhype i thought it was gonna be like my new one. favorite but okay yeah. where, would, where would you rank it it is my number one. Okay, so, that's the right answer. There you go. Yeah, it is my number one, followed what do you by. You got above it, Josh. Uh, Eleven twenty-two sixty-three. Uh, that's my number two. Number so good. I actually have I have an yeah. ongoing list of all the ones I've read in my top ten. So my top ten right now, in from one to ten, are it eleven twenty-two sixty-three, misery, the dead zone, Carrie, insomnia, at cemetery, the shining. The, oh, the stand is number nine. Apparently, there you go, and uh, the dark half. <laughs> So every one of these, I'm just like good book, good book, good book, good book. Yeah, that's yeah. what. <laughs> yeah, like that's what they, I was actually yeah. I was thinking. Like, please yeah. don't say Tommy Knockers. Please don't say Tommy Knockers. No, the only one that like I feel like people think is a hot take is like I have the dark half in my top ten. I love the dark half. That one's really good. Yeah. Yes, I'm gonna finish Brian's right. book. Of course. <laughs> don't know when. <laughs> it's not. A, it's not a disliking thing. It's just a numbers game. Yeah. Yeah. Struggle is real. You know what? Stephen My King book surprised TV me. Like... Go ahead. Uh, uh, I, I read The Eye of the Dragon last year, and I actually oh, yeah. really liked it. It was better than I expected it to be. I had heard some mixed yeah. stuff, but I thought it was a lot of fun. Like, I mean, it wasn't like groundbreaking or anything, but it was a good time. No, I liked it as well. Ian, have you read it's, I think a lot of times Tower? people... Uh... Yeah, I think... I, I think... Yeah, Ian, have, have you read Have you read, read all of Tower? Dark Tower? No, okay, I haven't. Here's my thing. I everyone has like a different reading order for what like I wish Stephen King would just put out a definitive here's how you should read my books as far as like Dark Tower goes. So I actually have like a reading order that I need to go on. So next I need to read The Wasteland, then Wizard and Glass, then Hearts in Atlantis, then Wolves of the Kala, then Song of Susanna, then Everything's Eventual, then The Dark Tower. Hmm. So wow. I, tell people, Salem's I would say Salem's Lot. Salem's Lot. Lot. That's all you I really would say needed. Salem's Lot and the stand which you've already read which is like yeah insomnia well i've read Salem's last one yeah. you actually insomnia helps a lot because there's a, there's a character that shows huge, up yeah. in, in, in dark yeah. tower seven you're like who the hell is this if you didn't yeah. read insomnia yeah. Yeah. So well i've read it yeah i've read insomnia and salem's lot i probably want to reread salem's lot before if it's that important because it's been a long time before five. everything else like i see sometimes like everything yeah. else it feels like an ad i'm like sure if you want to read the stand which is super freaking long to, to to get an idea of the man in black sure that's there but you don't have to to enjoy dark tower yeah. where i feel like dark tower five will completely spoil salem's lot for you you need to read salem's yeah. lot because it's an amazing book you don't want it spoiled for you right yeah so maybe if it's yeah. just like gonna yeah. spoil things for me maybe i'll be fine um just not rereading it because it's been probably like six or seven years since i read salem's lot yeah but i i that's like my number one priority series this year is to finish the dark tower because it's been a long time yeah i was finishing Sweet. my reread so we got the book six which was what made me just like so angry with that series so um, <laughs> that's where i stopped on a reread it's philip's favorite <laughs> Philip's favorites. I love <laughs> Philip. That's my dude. You know this, but every the last book and everything that he reads is always his favorite in the series. Like every realm of the Eldings <laughs> book, I joke, "Oh, this is going to be your new favorite in the series, isn't it?" And he's like, "Yeah, it really was." <laughs> <laughs> so him saying that dark, when he got the Song of Susanna and said that was his favorite Dark Tower book, I was like, <laughs> 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 uh, 
No, it's not. Yeah, yeah, yeah I want everybody to enjoy history. stuff. I definitely do. I want everybody to uh, enjoy stuff. Man, I was so mad when I read that book the first time. Oh. Uh, speaking of Stephen King, I love your uh, Jack Torrance uh, art behind you oh, on your door. Nice. Very nice. Yeah, it's got, it's got red rum on the other side. Yeah. Nice. Got the <laughs> got the the keyhole too. The dark. I saw that too. Yeah. yeah, I saw that. It's funny because you know Custom. I. Well, take pictures here for my thumbnails. And when I do my background replacer, it's all like, which one is your face? And I'm like, well, not this creepy, scary guy. <laughs> this, this creepy, scary guy. Yeah. <laughs> I always forget to take my thumbnail pictures. And then I have to go back and like try to find like a good still on like my video and screenshot. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That's why so the, I'm one time, the one time a year when I, when I do my green screen for the Red Fury Book Awards at the end of the year. I took a bunch of stills just so I would have like facial expressions for different thumbnails. Yeah. 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 Because I'm the so same way. I... And then I'm like trying to pause and find like where like my mouth isn't looking weird or the angles. Right. Yeah. Yep. It's a thumbnails it's a struggle are hard sometimes. sometimes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So did any of yeah. you read, just read The Dark Tower like through? Or did any did you? I, did, like, I was reading, reading it while it was coming out, so no. Oh my! Waiter name. That's a flex. I read through. <laughs> no, not for the beginning of, but when right before book four came out was when I when I read it, read the first three, and then right before book four came out, so I I waited for five, and then six, and then seven. Wow. <laughs> I read it through. Yeah. Read See, I thought it was Taylor's five, lot, six, seven. I like there. seven. I like seven. I, I, everyone says that the ending is divisive, and I have not been spoiled for it, so I really need to just hurry up and read it before I do get spoiled because I want to yeah. experience it and see how I, like I feel about it. Okay. Well, it's yeah, still a top five fantasy series all time for me. That tells you how strong I feel about the series, but there there are decisions made in six and seven. I'm like, no. <laughs> <sighs> I mean, I did I did break it's up with Stephen King, King right? for like years because of how mad I was about Dark Tower, <laughs> but yeah. Jeez. <laughs> I thought that you know waiting this long would soften some things. Now I didn't even get to six before I was it getting mad, but up. everybody everybody was saying it was so great, and I but they didn't understand what I didn't like about it. And I was like, Rrr. I think that's what you have to do with Stephen King, though. Like he very rarely has like a perfect book. I think mm. you just have to enjoy the good right. parts. And not I said that in a, when I was talking about this. Bag of Bones yesterday, it was like I think there's every book where you're like, there's one or two things you're like, I don't know what in the world well, he was thinking there. That's exactly. just what makes Stephen Stephen. <laughs> Yeah, that's why like it is still my favorite book, even though we all know there's that one thing that we'd all like to be removed. Like the rest of it is so perfect, and like all the characters and yeah. the relationships and yeah. Pennywise, it's just like it makes it all worth it. The only one I would say maybe eleven twenty two sixty three is his most like. Although a lot of people don't like some aspects of the the resolution on that book. I know. I love it, and the the last like book. page I, yeah. is like the most heartwarming ending. I think it's his best ending. It which, is. Which book? Eleven twenty two sixty three. Oh yeah, though that ending crushed me. Yeah. It's a bittersweet. So good. It's interesting though. I've talked to um, just some of the, my viewers that are international um, that don't connect with that book because oh. they don't have the connection that. that we do with the JFK assassination, which I think is very, uh, just very interesting observation. Because for us, that's one of the most seminal events of our history. But for someone who's not from America, it's just an event. It's not such a big yeah. deal. And um, I found that interesting when I've talked to people about the book that are not American. Yeah, Theo brought it up when he was when he and his wife were reading it. He was saying, like, I believe he said his wife didn't connect with it as much because in in Canada, it's still like. You know, it's just hard to relate to something like the JFK assassination in the 60s in America. But here it's like it's almost personal. I mean, I have an uncle that like he had told me like 10 years ago. He was like, yeah, I still can't believe you are living in Dallas. I hate Dallas. They killed Kennedy. I was like, Wait, <laughs> what? Yeah, totally. <laughs> he, was still, he was still fuming about it. Like 50 years later, he was like he thought that that city killed killed Kennedy. Because it was such an important event in in the history, so it's really just really interesting. Wow! But I guess proximity I'm matters. Like having a conundrum yeah. trying to figure out if you've got because it was a reread apparently on Goodreads. It's counted that I've read Morningstar twice this year. Yeah, you have to be careful with that because it'll do that for some reason. Just go back in and edit the dates read if you care that much. Yeah. Um, and it'll do that because otherwise it says like. 
I've read 40 books when you've actually read like 39. <laughs> yeah. Good read seems like, a major. When I, when I click on it though, it only shows it only shows that I've read it once. I don't understand. Yeah, good I, like, I, like, I feel like my mom yeah. who can't figure out how to like right. Yeah. <laughs> good reads does that to all of us. It, it, it gaslights everyone totally into right. thinking they're like not good at anything. <laughs> every every like month or so I am like, do I want to switch to story graph? And then I don't. Yeah. I made an account. I'm just like, I am not switching. <laughs> yeah. I'm there's the things I book. really like about Goodreads. I mean, also just the people that I'm friends with on it. Just everybody's so on Goodreads at least. Yeah. yeah. It has yeah. plenty of flaws, but it's just part of its identity now. <laughs> just like all it right, is, yeah. It is. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> we uh, love, I'm well, off we one letter in the title. <laughs> like if Phil I'm off in one four different in chats my, today, yeah. this guy. <laughs> well, it's his release so week, I guess. Yeah, yeah. That's why we 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 made an agreement to take a break on Realm of the Eldlings, and he was going to be quite busy here. Yeah, and congratulations, Phil. I know. I'm yeah, so to read I always call him the hardest. He's the hardest working man in BookTube. <laughs> I tell you, he's on so many chats and for yeah, he's today. so good. Internet's you know, busiest book nerd. He he puts together my Realm of the Oldlings <laughs> chats for me. Wow. <laughs> he's like, hey, let me everybody just let me know when you're available. And Philip's like, okay, guys, what about this date or this date? And he's he's like whipping everybody into shape. I'm like, all right, man. he's the doctor. <laughs> all right. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty sure he's cloned. That's the only way he can do all these group discussions. I could see him being cloned. Right. Every single one. And he's also <laughs> written a trilogy and it's done. Like, where do you find the time, yeah. Philip? Oh, yeah. And he also has a job. Yeah, I know. It's weird. No, he, there's no way he has a job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <okay>. Something, Something's <laughs> got to go. <laughs> Very American. I think it's only so much of that I can stand. Yeah. I can see that. That's why, like, I really yeah, do feel just, some comparisons with American Gods and Dark Tower. I feel like it's Neil Gaiman going all American. Which American makes sense. Gods would be hard for, yeah. American Gods is weird to begin yeah. with. Whether it is, I just read a scene that was yeah, very, cool. very strange. Yeah, it's a, it's a good kind of weird though. Okay. I I enjoyed it. Yeah, I did too. It's like a fever dream sometimes. It's one of those like you know if someone doesn't like it, I am totally understand why they don't like it but for yeah. me it, it it really worked have any of you guys read the sequel it's called like uh, an, an, an i don't know how, a nancy, nancy boys or something like, i don't know how you say it that. i haven't read it okay. no mm -mm, i haven't I either. Any good. Hmm. i don't know he's definitely a different voice and i just kind of like that yeah just a good uh change of pace yeah, you yeah, always know you're in for something fun. abstract and fun with Neil Gaiman. You may not enjoy all of it, but it's going to be an experience. So, yeah, 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 yeah. Like I was, I'm one of the few that didn't love Good Omens, but I, I liked it because either. it was. I liked it because it was different. That's the one he wrote with Terry Pratchett, and oh, I don't I'm know what it is. Author collaborations don't always work. Um, oh, I mean, we see that with yeah, Stephen King, Peter Straub, for, like yeah, most of. Them. <laughs> yeah, like most of his. Um, the worst one, though, was the one he wrote with his son. My goodness. Sleeping Beauty. Oh, oh, Sleeping Beauty. Oh, I think it's one of the worst god. books ever. Oh, my God. So bad. I, it it I might be. It's, 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 definitely, it's definitely the worst. one of the worst endings of his. And that's saying something because we know King doesn't always have the best right. endings. But no, I'm still that book had such potential. He, all he did was slap his name on that to help his kid. He didn't write anything in that book. Of none of his ideas. It had such potential, though. Like the idea, I thought was great, and then just it turned into a B movie at the end, like a bad one, and like not in a good way. It was so bad. Yeah, it's a bummer. Yeah. Do you yeah, like when I, when I get bad. there into the multiverse, I might just skip that one altogether. <laughs> <laughs> no one would blame you. Oh, I'm reading my first uh, Discworld book next month. I'm excited. Oh, no. Which one is cool. Which one? one? Um, so it's I have to read this one for uh, the readathon I'm doing. One of the prompts is uh, read a book with stairs on the cover of all things. Uh, and so my copy of The Color of Magic has stairs on it. So I'm reading that. Oh, I wanted to start stairs. with more, but I'm gonna go with Colors of Magic because it fits the prompt. So I get asked that so much. When are you reading Discworld? I don't know. Fuck. I know. I've only read one. Come on, you're supposed to have read all the series, Mike. I, know. I, know. <laughs> I, I never, I never listen on one that I have. Like I have, I have them on. I have a bunch of them on digital, but I, I don't know. 
no idea. I get it. Yeah. Well, I like that they're short, yeah, at least. Right. So I'm excited about having a, a fantasy series. Okay, wait, hold on. Is it fantasy or is it science fiction? Discworld? Discworld? Yeah. I think it's fantasy? probably fantasy. I don't know. Probably I fantasy. think it's probably... Most people would say it's fantasy, though. Okay. Well, I'm excited about having a fantasy a series then that uh, on, like, a turtle or something like that. Turtles. Right. Yeah, the back of a turtle. Yeah. Well, I'm excited about having a fantasy series that doesn't have, like, super long installments, because... Yeah. It's hard to juggle those. Yeah. It gets frustrating. It's kind of why I was thinking of picking up the um, the Legend of Driss books because like, Jordan long. was reading them, Yish. and I was like, "This would be kind of like it's a trilogy, but it'd be something really easy and quick to pick up while reading these bigger stuff." Same with Dresden. Although I know, like I know, I'm at the part of Dresden where as I start getting into like book ten and beyond, they're you're gonna want to and exactly, and they're yeah. not like fluff reads it's not like full moon at that point hey josh you know what's so great about the jfk museum and the sixth floor observatory and all that stuff it, mm-hmm. it's really really cool how they got the sniper's nest set up exactly like it was on that day in 1963 yeah. and especially the yeah. part where oswald isn't there so it's just like it was on that day in 1963 <laughs> <laughs> now when i lived in dallas that was literally anytime a, vis- a relative or a friend visited they all wanted to Go stand on the grassy knoll and go see that. But it actually is a really great museum. When people um, ask me all the time, have you read any nonfiction? I've like I've read probably thirty-five books on the JFK assassination. So yeah, I, wow. I, I okay. Like you can say, I'm an unofficial scholar of that. I even went there. I've I've walked the the path that they claim Oswald walked in like four minutes. Yeah, okay. Was he like fucking track runner? Because that's amazing. Yeah, but yeah, <laughs> yeah. I've been through yeah. that, all that stuff in Dallas. It's so great. I do it again. I do it again. It's great. <laughs> Okay, we got a controversial question here in the chat. We need to all answer. Um, can we get your worst books so far? So, like, so oh, far this year? year? This year? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think so. Um, Let's see. I need to look at my spreadsheet real quick. I've, I'm have i a Make judge sure. for the self-published science fiction competition. Some of those books are... yeah really hard to get through but i'm not gonna i'm not gonna name yeah. drop any of those because i don't want to be that guy um, yeah yeah let me get started. i guess i would say for me and it, it, again it isn't anything against the author or the book or any of that stuff it just might not be like i'm not that big into historical fiction yet uh that lancelot book by giles christian the whole time i was reading it i just okay. wanted it to be bernard cornwell's world war chronicles so that was probably my fault for that but that's probably the one i've struggled through the most but or the regulators by Stephen King, or I'm sorry, Richard Bachman. That's fair. <laughs> uh, for me, it's probably. So mine, mine... Go ahead. Go ahead. And I'm still deciding. Okay, uh, mine is uh, actually it's Tolkien: The Book of Lost Tales, Part One, which Christopher Tolkien even said in the prologue, like this is the least interesting of all of my father's stories. <laughs> <laughs> and it was true. Love that it was disclaimer. So dry. Oh my goodness, it was so dry. <laughs> Uh, mine, I read a horror book called Come With Me by Ronald Malfi, and I was really oh, hoping Malfi, it would yeah. be good. Yeah, I like Malfi, but that book was just really boring, so yeah. it was a bummer. I haven't read anything truly atrocious, though, so that's good. I know, that's yeah. not like me. I'd I say don't have anything that I would be like, do not recommend yet. Yeah. So. Right. The first book I read this year was a 150 page book called The Crying of Lot 49 by Thomas Pynchon. Oh, yeah. I really want to read Thomas Pynchon. I did too. So, and we, like me and Jimmy and Baron, all decided, like, oh, this is a great place to start. It's 150 pages. And we all really did not, did not like that book at all. Uh, yeah. I definitely want to try I mean, it's it. It's not his most popular work. Yeah. Just, no. Well, and if you guys like, decide to buddy read another one of his, let me know because I'd be in. I definitely want to. I think the next, I want to try V just because I've heard that's a good early book of his to start. Um, yeah. Gravity's Rainbow is not recommended for. Early There's one he has early. called Against the Day <laughs> that I really want to read. One called Against, Against the, the Day. Day. Yeah, I've heard that one's really yeah. good. Hmm. Grim <laughs> Week is amazing, guys. What are you talking about? Yeah, I actually really want to <laughs> get back into Lightbringer. <laughs> no? Thoughts of prayer? <laughs> Thoughts of prayer? <laughs> 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 oh, you were being sarcastic when you said you love Grim no, Week. I want everyone to have a good time. I, did. I read the first one and I liked it pretty well, and then I never continued. It's so divisive. Oh, book one was great. Book two was spectacular. Three, I thought ah, some problems, but still, I'm having a good time. Ooh, that's that's where I'll stop talking. Good call, I guess. 
<laughs> but you know, it's, everybody's a little different. Yeah. Didn't he just come out with a new Night Angel book? It's coming out this month, I think. Or it's coming. Month. Yeah. Most hilarious thing I've seen all year. He's re-releasing. I haven't read any of those. <laughs> I haven't read them either. I don't think I've ever. I don't. Yeah, I haven't read any of Brent Weeks. Okay, I have. There's an interesting question here. Can you put? Yeah. Yes, I do. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I actually was reminiscing about that yesterday. I think we're like, <laughs> I I miss the feeling of just like stumbling upon a book and then like loving it and reading those and not like caring about all the agenda of like I got to read this now. I got to read that now. I got to juggle all yeah. these like yeah. the carefree aspects of reading. Yes um, and no, because I feel like. It's introduced me to a lot of stuff I probably never would have Absolutely. Read. That's oh, no, 100%. Like, but, but at the I, same I time. I do sometimes be thinking about, oh, why did I plan this stupid read along? You know, and I was like, I just want to, I just want to read this sh other thing I got, you know. But so, I mean, it's, it's, yeah. it's, it's a little bit of both. I mean, it, it's a, it's I a double sword. Right I mean, schedule because I, I can't, I have to do everything on a schedule. It's just, it's just the way I'm wired. So that doesn't really bother yeah. me. But I, I definitely wouldn't mind being like, you know what? I'm just going to pick this up today and read it, you know, but you know, I plan ahead too much. Yeah. Yeah. But so I'd say yes and no like for me as well. Yeah. I don't think I would go yeah, back. Yeah. Like I'm grateful and I like the, being a part of the community and I like all the books I've been Same. introduced to, mm -hmm. but there are some days that I miss the simplicity of just, yeah. But see what, what you said, I agree yeah. with, except that I remember the whole reason I started this because I had no one to talk to about these books, you know, yeah. Because yeah, no one I know huge. read fantasy. So, you yeah. know, I, 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 so I'm like, I appreciate that part of it. Being able to have people yeah. to talk to that are reading the same thing as me is just, just yeah. great. Even yeah. if, you know, like right now we're going through uh... finish it in two days. And <laughs> I could talk to them about it when I'm done. Yeah. So, <laughs> like, we're going through Song of Ice of Fire right now. And I've read all these books before, but reading it for the first time with like a whole group of people instead of, you know, like the first time I read it, I was just like on Reddit boards. Theory, uh, reading random theories of like someone people. please talk to me <laughs> yeah like, <laughs> like, like, this time it's just like actually before, talking to people, really before they hit the the pop culture phenomenon that the show made it go to i used to have to go to like bulletin board systems to find people to talk to this to, to talk about that it was before reddit and all that stuff mm -hmm. guys oh, yeah. it, was, it was great it was great so yeah nice. yeah no that's definitely the the conversation side of it is fantastic because i know just well, like I just finished Dead House Gates like two nights ago mm -hmm. and I have, so I'm posting, I did a reading vlog. So I'm posting that like Monday ish or something. Um, so I'll get to talk to people in comments there. And then we're going to have the live show with, you know, Ian and, and, and Alex and Jordan and Alan. So we get to do conversation there. And um, that's one of the most enjoyable things for me is those conversations because yeah, I remember all of that. Um, mm -hmm. so many series back in the day that you'd finish or even read and like nobody to talk to about it at all. And, um, so it's, it's definitely great, but yeah, I do kind of miss just the spontaneity of like picking up a book and yeah. because I have less obligations. <laughs> yep. I do too. Yeah. There's kind of that too. I mean, <laughs> I feel like well, that. <laughs> certainly less people in my real life read. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Well, I, I, I'm lucky in that regard. My family and I actually have a book club. Um, it started with me and my dad back in like 2015 and we just challenged each other. That's when I really got into reading. We challenged each other to read 52 books in a year and we did it. And then my aunt joined and then my wife joined and then my brothers have joined. So we have like quarterly meetings where we discuss what we've read and we have quarterly books we read together. So it's awesome. Yeah. It's awesome. Yeah. Well, hey guys, uh, I got to hop off, but I have had an awesome time. Thanks so much, Josh, for having me on. Yeah. Thanks Ian. Anything we can look forward to on your channel in upcoming weeks besides our collab? Yeah, we've got a lot of collabs uh, coming up with the uh, Malazin um, Battle of the Bands readathons coming up. I'll have my TBR up for that soon. I'm gonna do a challenge in April where I try to read seven books in seven days. So uh, I'll have a reading vlog up for that. Yeah, that's about it though. So, cool. Just reading. All right, guys. Thank y'all so much. Right. I'll see you later. Have a good day, man. Thanks, Ian. Bye. Bye. See ya. Well, we can probably, we've been going a little over two hours here, so we can, let me just, we wrap up with the same question for each of you guys. Uh, Mike, sure, what do yeah. you have coming up on your channel coming up? Oh, no idea. <laughs> <laughs> I, I put up video yesterday, see what I was going to do. And I already forgot. Um, 
I got a, a live stream coming up with uh, with with Madison and Scott, the ball booktuber. Uh, we're going to be doing our spoiler talk for a Game of Thrones. So while we're waiting for season two of House of the Dragon, we said, what can we do on Throne Zone? You know, during that time, a lot of people recommended, hey, you guys are really good. You should, uh, you know, do a rewatch of the show. And do that. I was like, I don't think any of us have enough time to do that and do episodes of a podcast, basically, for that. But I said, hey, we're all rereading these books right now. So why don't we why don't we do that? Because I'm doing the standard reviews on my channel. So, hey, that way you can do the spoiler talks, I think, are a lot more fun with a group than it is just yeah, yourself. Yeah, but uh, that, and I'll um, do my Morningstar review because I'm going to have Howler Pod on the week after to talk spoilers for, for Morningstar. And probably my, my TBR for April, which, like I said, if you're on the Keymark Discord, you already know what those are because we had to kind of announce yeah. it for the readathon. But you know what? TBR videos are fun, I think. You know? I heard they are fun. And one thing yeah, I've learned about fun, viewers is they, they, they love hearing about what you're going to read more though, more so than what you've actually read. So They do. People love TBRs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Gets me yeah, excited. That is so interesting. So, Alex, what do you got coming up? Um, So, within the next week or two, we should be doing the final live show for Shogun because we just finished that book this month. That'll probably be on um tori's channel i believe she's hosting it so that'll be fun uh obviously we're gonna be doing the house gates discussion on your channel in the next few weeks which i'm really looking forward to uh my channel you know i think we're gonna be i'm gonna be doing like a april tbr definitely just because the month's wrapping up i want to do a dead house gates review probably uh i'd like to do I have a few ideas for videos I want to do um, on like series overviews. I definitely want to do something related to Fitz as a character once I finish the whole series that I have been thinking about for a while. And maybe like some overall thoughts on Faithful and the Fallen because I just finished that series. Um, but I don't know. I have a bunch of ideas I want to go. But probably April TBR would probably be the soonest thing just because we're in the last month of the last week of the month at this point. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, so I have um, well, I have my Dead House Gates vlog coming up Sunday, Monday. It just depends when I throw it all together, edit it together. Um, let's see. We have the collaboration for Dead House Gates, which, which will be on my channel. Mm -hmm. And then a few days after that, I think we said that's going to be on the 11th. I think it's on the 14th. I'm interviewing, um, going to do a live stream interview of uh, indie author H.C. Newell who wrote a book mm -hmm. called Curse of the Fallen, and I'm part of her virtual book tour. And it's a work of grim, dark fantasy. So I'm looking forward to, to reading that and uh, talking about that on the channel. So that's some of the things you'll see here on, on Red Fury Books. But I want to thank everybody that's been in the chat, interacting with us, giving us good questions, good discussion items. Once again, I want to thank Ian, who had to leave a few minutes ago, Mike and Alex. And of course, you know, both of these guys here, they have bigger channels than mine. But if for some reason you're on my channel and you don't know their channels, go check them out. Like mm -hmm. I always tell everybody, I found Daniel Green after I found Mike's book reviews. So you never mm -hmm. know. Maybe you found me nice. before these guys. But nice. anyway, thanks for being here. Right <laughs> <laughs> thanks for being here and have a great rest of your weekend. And we'll see you next time. Thanks for having us. Thanks, everyone.